Welcome to this lovely evening, um, July 26, uh, here, uh, 2017, here in the town hall. It's just beautiful outside. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to go right to um, Tilton Library, because you're here. W was anyone else coming? Oh, great. Oh, okay, then we'll wait. Um, yep. I, I just thought you didn't want to hang around on such a beautiful night. But that's fine. Um, so let's do the administrator's report because oh. poor Wendy, poor is, Wendy is not feeling too swift. No. Um, okay. Uh, we have a couple of new hires here in town. We have a new uh, reach coordinator for the senior center, Meg Ryan, who happens to be a Deerfield resident. And she's going to begin on July 31st. That's been open a couple months now mm -hmm. at least. Um, right. I'm, I'm reporting on our executive assistant search, the long-awaited search yep. um, and long search. <laughs> um, uh, offered the position to Key K I Eno, who is the um, she's sim serving in a similar capacity for the town of Hatfield. She's been doing this kind of work for nine years, and she's it was highly recommended. I called references she gave, references she didn't give, but gave me permission to talk to anybody and. Um, and Pat has, has met her and sat in on the final interviews. We had four finalists. I'm trying not to sneeze, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, and um, she can start August 10th. Oh, nice. man, that's and wonderful. And we have a sense that she will be a good fit. Um, she uh, ex you know, has that experience. She's very well-versed in technology as well. Can't wait to. And um, I, as I say to people, what caught my ear was when she said, I say to my admi the administrator she works with, I said, well, I can take care of that. Give that to me. Ooh, that'll be nice. <laughs> so that kind of, uh, that was something. But we, we had um, four good finalists, and, you know, um, that it was hard. We liked everybody. But um, so I would just. I know I said I've offered her the job, but if you would like to bless it or whatever, I can't wait um, to welcome you her. Don't, to, I think we have to, to uh, actually appoint her. Okay. So, um, would you make a motion? I uh, make. Go ahead. I was going to say, what's oh. her name? I mean, oh. uh, it's it's Key, Key Eno. Yes. Yep. Uh, I make a motion to appoint Key Eno to assistant executive assistant executive assistant for the selectman's office, starting oh, August tenth. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I can't wait to welcome her in person. Yes. I, I think it would be helpful she, if you spelled the, her name for it's, people. It's K I, first okay. name, Eno, E N O. Oh, I almost okay. I said zero. <laughs> Great. That's wonderful. Um, that's exciting that we will have full staff again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to it so we can. I know you are. And so. I know you must be. Yeah. And that, that'll be great. So, okay. Um, Is there anything else? Um, I mean, can run quickly through things. Um, sure. Have that is big assessor's RFP uh, has been posted and done in um, all the right places. And right. Um, proposals are due Monday. And we'll see what we get. Uh, John Codere will be with me when we do receive mm -hmm. them at noon. Um, I've uh, put in your folders the cherry sheet for yes. this year, which is the local aid mm -hmm. figures. Mm -hmm. um, not, um, it's not bad and not fabulous. <laughs> right. <laughs> and pretty much par for the course, although going down each year. I yep. put, I put uh, the, this year and the pre two previous fiscal years. But one uh, packet is Frontier and the other is the town of Deerfield. So we can look at that. Um, but again, you know what? I think I only have. It's the in the mail folder, which is. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm go. sorry. That's okay. It was. Uh, I had to. I didn't realize it was two separate ones. Okay. So since you last met, um, this is you know the turn of the year. A lot happens. We get a lot of uh, surveys and things to fill out and memberships and all of that. That little things that keep us busy. Um, I did get notice that um, because of our participation in Maya Mass Interlocal Insurance, who we uh, 
get all our insurance and then health insurance through because of participation in trainings and other things we've got a $2,846 credit Great. Uh, reward credit so that's a good thing um, just want to let you know our next meeting your next meeting in two weeks is it's filling up um, Marlene Johnson and others from the senior center are going to be on the agenda and uh, coming to talk about the church and the senior center and maybe we'll have some more information at that point about the status of the church and that's August 9th yes that's the next one okay and uh, you'll have two uh, liquor license change of managers so here hearing for that and one includes a transfer uh, of the license oh, I'll take this off uh, request for a right of first refusal but I said I thought we did that already and it was one you had done in February but an attorney wrote me today about it um, in the in the meeting following that um, uh, I've asked Joe Bowers from Kenyon Energy they're the folks who have been who have taken over from Lake Street the River Road project and he's uh, he sends me documents all the time to sign I said could you please come out and explain all of this to mm -hmm. everybody Right. So I, I, um, I think it's important that we understand what they're doing, what we get out of it, yep. what we agreed to a year or two, I don't mm -hmm. know how long ago About you year, agreed to, year and a half. Um, in terms of pilot, I, I have some of that information, but I'd rather they explain it and explain um, how the net metering credits have been assigned, because uh, I, I didn't know why we had so little compared to other groups that are on the list other towns, Southampton, Longmeadow, school districts. So little what? Uh, net metering credits. It's a percentage amount. So um, he will explain that. I and thought it was going to be 20%. It's six and a half. I don't, I, I, oh, okay. that's All the right. credits. And I can't explain how that actually okay. translates. We'll okay. I want him to come do that. On our, <laughs> okay. on so he'll be here at your, I mean, that meeting, second meeting in August to talk about that. Um, that's all. I'll, I'll right. stop there. I know. I don't. I don't know how that works. I think that would be wonderful be to have to, them to get in it because you're right. I think it was I, like I have a good handle on what we were. we're okay. Finished. Right. And and we do have it in writing somewhere because I did see that. Correct. Whether I don't know if we've been getting the pilot payments yet because I knew I don't even know if they're online yet. Right. They haven't they're been not, online. Right. So I don't know I asked about what that. our agreement yeah. was as far as the payments start when they start operation I, I'm not sure of that right and there's ma but some malleability with that any sure. rate even if even if we've got documents saying we're doing this there's an opportunity to change that around a bit and I want him to explain it so we're gonna be you know I don't want to be a, yeah in the well, middle we'll of just, it I'd rather you have the person here to explain it and answer your questions could you check with mr. Kader about that because I know he's right on top of that and I, and I don't know if uh, those pilot agreements were supposed to start this year, whether they were online or not. Because we're not assessing them any personal property right. value, so. Right. I will. Thank you. Thanks. And they'll be on the 23rd? You're hoping, hoping to have them on the 23rd? I asked him to be here yep. about 7.15. Great. I think he's coming from Schenectady, so. Ah. Okay. I'll Thank stop. You. If you have anything? questions for yeah. me, I'll no, we're good. answer. No, we're good. <coughs> um, are you guys ready? Yes. Okay. Come on up. Come on up. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I have to ask you to introduce yourselves, though, okay. even though you're here regularly. <laughs> okay. I'm Sarah Woodbury, Library Director. Town of Deerfield. <laughs> Nancy Maynard, I live on Pocumtick Drive and I'm chair of the library trustees. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, I thought I'd start out by reading the letter that we received from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, um, right. dated July 13th. It's about the um, Public Library Construction Program grant that we applied for. Um, and um, does that, does that make sense to read it? It's not sure. that long. Sure. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Dear Sarah, thank you for participating in the Massachusetts Public Library Construction Program, MPLCP, 2016-2017 Construction Grant Application Round. The Board of Library Commissioners and its staff appreciate the time and effort that went into the completion of the Deerfield application. 
At the July 13, 2017 meeting of the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, the board voted to make provisional grant awards and waiting list placements for the 2016 to 2017 construction grant route. The board voted that the Deerfield project be placed on the waiting list with a rank of number 12, the, with the rank of 12 of 24. When funds become available to MPLCP through the state's annual capital budget, a provisional grant award will be made in the amount of $3,944,338 for the Tilton Library's construction project. After the contract is executed, MPLC CP Library Building Specialist will work closely with you during the completion of schematic design and into design development. The grant reviewer's comments about the project and conditions will be discussed with you in the coming months. We will be in contact after Labor Day to discuss scheduling a meeting with you. For your information, you can find the Code of Massachusetts Regulation 605 CMR 6.00 that governs the MPLCP at Long um, <laughs> URL. Congratulations on reading this important miles, reaching this important milestone with the Tilton Library's placement on the waiting list. Sincerely, James Lonergan, Director, Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. So we're very pleased to hear this news. Um, it gives us some time um, to um, raise money and uh, garner support for the project. Um, very happy to hear that. I'm really excited about that. So, how's your <laughs> fundraising going, Nancy? Uh, the fundraising is actually going well. Um, since we last met, we've um, secured two additional gifts, um, one which has requested a naming opportunity. Um, so we have raised $594,000. Um, wow. So that's up about $125,000 since um, we met. Um, that's fantastic. And so Great. as we move forward, um, Last week, the capital campaign committee met, and um, we're, you know, now starting to uh, determine what the process will be. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, for doing individual donor solicitations and business solicitations. Um, so we feel really good about the foundation that we've set over the past few months, um, and now we can methodically move forward with with those efforts. And um, and then we hope to be able to report lots of good news. So. Um, you know, we're anticipating that um, we'll garner more information when um, the meeting happens in the fall about the project and and what that means to be on the wait list and, and how we proceed with that. And so I imagine, you know, um, you'll be giving us guidance on um, the committees that we need to meet with so that we can start putting things into the pipeline so that uh, we're prepared for whatever might happen. Um, Sarah did some research on the last several rounds of grants and you know there's no rhyme or reason when you're on the wait list you know what might happen to move you um, forward so, um, so we want to be prepared for that sure um, when you find out uh, what you know more information in the fall just you know um, come uh, put call Wendy and get on our agenda so that we can we we'll be glad to do um, that find out what's going on keeping up what was the t was the total um, that they're granting what you were seeking or how did that compare it was close to the estimate of what we felt we would receive what you would um, receive um, it is up to 50% of construction costs and it's about that okay um, it's an estimate made sure. by the um, uh, the budget budgetary yep. uh, people and depending on what year it goes in and right. rise of construction costs and right. all okay that's good um, but to know. we were very pleased that yeah. it, was, it was very close to you know what that projection was. Right, um, and it gives you a little time and, and us a little time. And that way, you know, now that we know that, that can help us as we form our budgets um, for the capital campaign. You know, we're working on gift tables and um, those kinds of things that the committee will be um, finalizing and recommending to the board to um, to vote on it, um, either in our August or September meetings. Um, so we're trying to keep all those things moving right along. Great. Great. So we thank you for your support and your enthusiasm on the day of. Sarah was getting calls from all over the state, from her peers <laughs> sure. and from the OPM and architect. That everybody's really happy with the placement in it. Yeah. It gives us all a lot of time to just methodically move forward and um, do it in a planful way. 
That's great. Well, I'm really appreciative that your um, fundraising is going so well. Mm -hmm. It really is very helpful for us. So thank you so much. Thank you. That's exciting news. <laughs> yes. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Enjoy Thanks. the night. Figured out three million. Nine hundred and thirty-four thousand, I think. Three million nine hundred. Mr. Hillier, do you want to come up? Are you are you ready? With me is Cheryl McCollum. We're both trustees for the Kind Association. Okay. Thank you for agreeing to see us. Sure. No problem. Um, why don't you speak into the mic so sure. and introduce yourselves. Uh, Richard Hillier. I live at 5B Evans Lane in South Deerfield, and Cheryl's at 4. Cher uh, Cheryl Bucala. I'm at 3A Evans Lane. Okay. And you're here tonight for? Well, we want to do two driveways on um, Mill Village mm -hmm. Road. Uh, but the problem is we have severe ponding in uh, rainy seasons and there's no drainage at these two driveways the driveways that are closest to mill village road there's a um, two drains which i believe the association put in on evans lane to the left and the right and there's a one further up on um, mill village for the two driveways that are beyond uh, beyond evans. Evans Lane, which are also part of the association. And the problems with them uh, are not the same problems with the, these other two. Now, um, there is a drain um, right near the Yankee Candle um, Distribution Center. Mm -hmm. There's also, I believe, a uh, drain that's probably part of the town, right, Kevin, that's right near the fire hydrant? This side of, this yeah. side of the fire hydrant. Yeah. Uh, the road, I've took a, t a couple of pictures, the road's been redone a number of times, but at least the last time you can see, if you, if you, especially at this time of night, it's been capped in the center. So the, so the, the, uh, uh, the severity of the, the runoff has, I think, increased. So what we'd like some solution to um, at least provide some drainage for those two driveways so we don't have this severe buildup and deterioration. And if, if that can't happen, then we'd like to know what the restriction, or we'd, we'd like to know what, regardless of that, um, what are the restrictions, if any, on redoing the driveway? Because the driveway um, is, 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 comes down and then comes up towards the road. It's deteriorated quite a bit. and. Uh, this problem is especially in the winter, right, Cheryl? You can speak to it. Cheryl's been yeah. with the association for 30, 30 years? No, not that long, but at least 15, going on 20, I think. Um, that the, the way the, the road is, it's higher, and all of the water coming from the road comes onto, into the driveways and onto the lawn that's um, next to the road. So especially in the building that's like on, on the first building when you come on to uh, Mill Village Road. It has a huge, huge puddle at the end of the driveway and it has nowhere to drain because all the water keeps on coming off and there's nowhere for it to go down the road to go to that drain that's further down by the hydrant. So we want to be able to uh, ask you that what you can do to help us with this problem because it's deteriorating the drive, that driveway especially with all the water that's on the end of the driveway. So it needs to be um, repaved now, but it won't make any difference in a few years if all that water keeps on coming onto the driveway. We'll be continuously trying to keep it so it doesn't deteriorate. So we wanna, you know, ask you guys what you can help, what you can do to help us, and then give us an idea of what we can also do on our own to help alleviate the problem, you know? How do you see it, Kevin? Could so, you... Kevin, you and um, Kippy had gone out. Sure. Um, nice to see you. Could... Take, take the mic. 
Hi, Kevin Scarborough, uh, Highway Superintendent, Town of Deerfield. Um, I did, Kip and I went back out and we looked at that. A um, couple of the things that we, we were looking at is, is there is definitely a, a low spot in the driveway itself as it meets the road. Um, I've done some research. I've gone through our Chapter 90. I have talked with Hap Eaton, which was our previous uh, highway director for ever. Um, and anyway, his, his recollection of what he has is the amount of times that it's been, it's been paved has been, for the most part, minimal. The last time that they did the paving, what they did was is they shimmed it because there was wheel ruts. So like when you drive down the road, you got those two mm -hmm. little ruts. What they did was they shimmed that. So it made everything level again. Now, once they did that, the following year, they went through and they, it's a rubber and stone. Um, and basically that'll give you about, about a three eighths of an inch rise. Um, some of the issues that I th personally myself, I looked at, um, it looks like the driveways are too low. If the, if the very ends of the driveways could be brought up so it's a little bit more level, but it still has to be down a little bit for the simple fact that Kip and I both talked about, and this is how roadways are designed, is, is the water has to be shed from the road. And what it does is it actually sheds into the, uh, the grass areas. And if there's puddling or something like that, you know, if, after they, if they go ahead and they redo their, the end of their driveways, they bring them up, and the areas on both sides are low, I mean, I can bring in some, some loam to take the curse of those out. Um, but the very first driveway, uh, somebody's been continually cutting in awfully hard. Um, cause Kip and I were just, uh, we both noticed that when we were there. Um, so if that's the case, we do that, uh, you're gonna have to make sure that the people don't cut the edge of the driveways. I'm not yeah, sure no, if it's- Both driveways are, or people do that Yeah, very and unfortunately much. what that does, every time they do that, it's, it's pounding down, pounding down that edge, which is again, creating more, more of a ponding issue. Kevin, can I just ask real yes, quickly, is it the, is it the two, um, kind of driveways before Evans Road? Correct. Those yes, two, be, okay, yes. just wanted to get a clarification yep. of which, which yep. ones the they were. The two beyond, uh, their levels are reasonably the same as the other two, but they do have a drain, and there is a, what I would call um, a culvert. It's not really a culvert, it's a, what would you call it? A, Swale a or something? Swale. 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 Yeah. There really, there's no such thing on this side because it's the south side. South side. So there's no way for it to run off. So, so the, the only thing I would say is you're correct that the driveway is low, but it's the same circumstance up on the other side of Evans Lane, but with a drain and a, a swallow of sorts or a drainage area, there's some place for it mm -hmm. to, go. to go. And when I look at, I'm just gonna show you this picture, Kevin, that I took tonight. Yeah. So it's these two. And it looks to me, again, the naked eye is, uh, it's, this one and this I one. have an undergraduate degree in engineering, but that, 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 uh, that can well. be dangerous. Um, but it looks like, you know, there is a little cap, more of a cap if you look at right. it when this road was done. So even what though, happened was, yeah. is, okay, see, see that line right there? Right. That line right there is where they did the shimming. Right. So, so what they did was they didn't go all the way to the crown of the road. Right. They only came up like within yeah. ballpark, probably about two and a half, three feet. Yeah. To it, and all they did was they just took the the dips out of the roadway. Right, but when when that happened, then mm -hmm. you have a more propensity for more runoff. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, you, you would when because you, you uh, yeah when you redo it exactly yeah. you would. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that kind of uh, swale, if that's what you call it, mm -hmm. that's on on the other side of Evan um, past Evans Lane. Mm -hmm. Now, can anything like that be done beyond you know like beyond the, beyond the the southernmost house? Yes, um, to yeah, it. Yeah, you, you could probably go ahead and do something like that, but it can't be very much because we really don't want to be bringing all of that water down to that, that to, to those other catch basins because when you really think about it, is roadway water, <coughs> excuse me, roadway water is bad. You know, right. It's got all the contaminants, the whole nine yards, and, and if we, for a poor choice of putting it, if we take all of our water and put it into a catch basin and drop it into a certain area, now we're, I don't wanna use the word poisoning, but now we're putting contaminants all in one area compared to if it's yeah, on the edge of the road, it, it, it dissipates a little bit less. Um, you know, like I said, you know, we could very well put a small little, little swale in there. I mean, I don't think that would be too much of an issue, but personally myself, I really don't see uh, uh, culverts Ke going in with pipes and 
Kevin, is it possible instead of putting in a swale that you could put a pipe that has holes in it so it would facilitate fil filtration but and then loam over it so that you wouldn't have sitting water? You could do that, yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry, I, it took me a second to... I don't think that would work well. Some kind of you a don't French think so? Drain. It doesn't it's just, hold it's just but, but it self contains self drain, self French drain. So it would be a perforated pipe with a sock. So you wouldn't be room, so you wouldn't be getting any of the organics or any material into it that would actually plug it. And then it would be perforated, which would allow the water to go in and the water to be released. What you're trying to do is fill, give it some filtration but space. But I would not want to yeah. direct it anywhere. No. Because right. if I do we'll that, just be sitting there. The water, well, so instead, no, I was saying instead of just putting in loam or whatever, sure. or you, you put that in and then you, then you cover it up. Because the, the problem is, you know, you don't want standing water. Right. I mean, but we're trying to. Historically, if, if I, and, and I could be wrong, but I would think that if we go ahead and we, we raise that driveway up a little bit and we right. fix it on both sides of that, there really isn't much ponding, I don't think. But if there is, we can we could continue to the next step. The ponding you're concerned about is on the driveway. On the driveway, right? on the driveway. So, yeah. And when you deteriorate, and you're looking at doing two new driveways, so when you put another layer, I assume they they ground it up or whatever. But then you put another layer on and meet it level with the road, um, and then the water would then come off the road, come off the driveways. Correct. And that's then what, go that's into what the grass area. And into the grass the area, and then. And again, yeah. you know, if there's if there's potholes or if there's there's low spots on either side of the driveway, then you I mean, could I, add I, some I've material. No whoever coming by with some with some loam and, and filling those areas in just to, to bring it back. So up it's again. not a huge yeah. drop right. off the edge yeah. of the driveway. Which yeah, inadvertently would turn into a puddle, which would create mosquitoes. Mm. Well, we talked. Um, you recommended, I think, that we not necessarily tear up the whole driveway. Although, you know, this is an informal discussion. Right. 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 But, bring it up so if we bring it up to the level of the road yeah that's fine yeah so long yeah. as the excess or just a just a, no, a hair you young, it a has hair to little. be low the water has to be able to go off of the road you can't put water onto the road you know what i'm saying so so if this is the road you can't put your driveway like that to keep the water from going in your driveway right. it has to be the same level or lower but uh if we put it up to the same level mm -hmm. there is a chance with a lot of rain that it will end up puddling on the road too. No, no as long as I so think as long it, as it's lower on both sides of the driveway, that's off. where it will right, drain exactly. off. Right, exactly. So if you bring a little pitch to it, I just don't want to <clears throat> redo it. Correct. And then find out well, that you're causing yeah, troubles in the road. Right. Right. Or you're saying this is unacceptable. You got to retear. Uh, correct. I, I yeah, I would think you'd want to bring it down just below the road level, and then, like you said crown that driveway as well right. so it goes off both sides and then if it was a huge you know puddle on both sides you'd you'd offer a little bit of loam oh, to sure. Kip, are, are you guys going to redo those driveways anyways we intend we wanted to do them this fall but we wanted to find Make out sure do it right what yeah. you would do do it right do it right yeah and, uh, because we know way down the street they put these culverts in up towards their field academy on the left right and but i don't the, know the scenario is those lawns pitch down toward the road and the driveway's higher, so I think they put those culverts so the water can go from one side to the other. Yeah. And the two driveways you speak of, it's kind of, the uh, it's a downhill direction. on both sides a little bit, goes toward Evans Lane. And when I saw the water there, uh, I think it was there, was it Tuesday it rained? Or when, Monday, yeah. I don't know. It was, yeah. I went over there and I saw the puddles at the corner of the driveways, and it, but like Kevin said, if you just put more loam there, if you keep driving on it, you're gonna, every time you, you mush it out to the side, but it looks like those driveways have kind of shifted. So if they redo that and just come straight across and then down, I think it would be fine. Yeah, I think these two, is, it's exacerbated by the fact that at, at Evans Lane, when you look below Evans Lane, so to speak, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a big crown on the road. So water that comes off sure. the road. We, I think the association put these, because Kevin and I looked at this and we think mm -hmm. it's out of yeah. two drains at Evans Lane. Yeah, those, yeah. those would have been put in by the yeah. developer. By the developer. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. again, there's another one up that, for the other two. So there's, there's not as much runoff on the uh, two past correct. Evans as here. Right. So the winter's a big thing, too, with the ice. Yeah, and the, 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 the summer in is not the worst, right. I think it's the no, there, in, in the winter time, there is it doesn't drain because of the frozen ground. Right, right. Got no place to that, there's like eight feet of puddle, 
right at the you end know, of the driveway. Onto the end of the driveway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see and what you mean. And so that's what we're really concerned about in that because you've right. got six inches of water down there mm -hmm. that you have to drive through, and then that's icy, and then it breaks up, and right, you know, and trying to get out onto the road when it's yeah, when it's and icy there. As there's more water on the ends of those driveways, then they deteriorate more. Right. So. You know, like we don't want to have to replace those driveways every couple Much, of years because right. the water sits mm -hmm. in them. Right. So, Kevin, you feel comfortable that if you it, can sort this out? I, I would. I would think that. Well, I think this is. And Chip, chime in as you feel need. Um, personal opinion is, I think if we can take those driveways, raise the elevation of them so there's not a dip down. Again, I can go ahead and I can take some some loam and put it on either side to make sure we're not having a puddle issue there um, and then see how it plays out. Right, well, and then well. if you have to put in a, and, and then, and then a dry if, well or if something. we needed to, south of the southernmost driveway, mm -hmm. then we can go from there, we can go a ways with, with a sock, um, mm -hmm. you know, a covered sock. And, and, but again, that covered sock would be not directed to a catch basin. Correct. Right. Right. Would you put anything north of that first driveway? We could, okay. um, but again, it's 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 it would be probably pretty much the same thing. Yeah. You know, we can go ahead, we can put it in, but again, all it's going to do is it's just going to leach into the, the road as it should. So hopefully, if, if the driveways are brought up and we put a little material on both sides, hopefully we shouldn't have any ponding issues. So we road. should keep do the, the driveway upgrade first. Yeah, yeah, that's and do it do. and do it before the first of October so yep. that the yes. ground's not frozen. Yep, yeah, exactly. and then have you. Yeah, and then we can come through. Yeah, that sounds like a good. What I'd recommend have, uh, is have the contractor widen that a little. The radius is so yeah, this just, doesn't yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah. They, you know they could flare it out another couple of feet, and that way you know they wouldn't have such a tendency to run yeah. over the grass and stuff. Right, like cut the right. corners. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Especially yeah. with uh, those two um, units have. You know, more people going in and out right. of it. Right. More people that are going in and out of it. The tendency is to cut. Yeah. And you go so, by so each other. So you may just want to think about the idea of maybe widening out the driveway just a little bit. Yeah. You know, on the corners. Yeah. Yep. You know, like yeah. I said, on yeah. you know the radiuses, I think I'd bring them out. I think I'd probably go more more than a foot at each yeah. side. I think I might almost say two feet on well, each side. Well, we could curve it out. Or... It's like where you put. Yeah. 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 In the radius. colleges, you should let the students walk for a while and then put in the. <laughs> telling them they're going to walk on right angles, you know, it's not the human way. So we, ha we have a condo meeting next month, and we will um, mm -hmm. set the, our process in the works to get the contractor to do the end of the driveway. We probably won't go all the way to the house with yeah, the driveway. No need, probably but maybe half, not even half, halfway. You know, yeah. like, like and to get that up yeah. to just below <clears throat> the road. Right. Just scarify okay. it a little and yep. then tie it yep. in exactly. and put the corners out on an angle. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, right. so, you, so you all are okay then? You think you, you have a like plan? You feel like this is a good plan? Yeah. yeah between good. what we do with the driveway mm -hmm. and what um, yeah. Touch base Kevin can Kevin do after. with uh, yeah. some fill on the ends of that. So I think that it will work or if that other drain thing. Mm -hmm. so one step at a time and see what happens. Yes, yep. absolutely. Yes. Yep. All right. So we'll know this winter if, you, if, if it works. If it works and it doesn't, you'll come back in the spring and, and put, some put in some perforated some. piping. Yep. All right. Okay. Thank Great. You very much. Thank you all. Right. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, you so much oh, for coming. You. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Enjoy Have a the nice night. evening. Nice. Yes. Thank, thank you, you so you much. Too. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, Kevin. You poor thing. Let's get you done. I, first off, I want to say thank you very, very much. Um, uh, 81 catch basins oh, treated basin, with mosquito dunks. That was absolutely wonderful. <coughs> um, it, if we hired this out, it would be $8.50 a catch basin. So this is almost $700 of um, work that the highway department did for us. So I just want to say thank you. Yeah, and it's really still ongoing too. And, um, you know, this yep. year we've had um, wet weather continuously mm -hmm. and... Um, it was really dry in the fall, so the mosquitoes, the triple E kind of mosquitoes, probably are not going to be an issue this year. But the mosquitoes that are the catch base in the West Nile disease mm -hmm. mosquitoes are really prevalent. And, and so I'm, I'm really 
happy that you did this, so thank you. No problem. Uh, well, one thing I wanted to add is I wanted to thank you for cleaning up the dump. Um, a uh, transfer station. Transfer station. <laughs> Constantly doing that. Um, it's a habit of being. Just because it's called the dump doesn't old. need to look like one. That's right. No, it looks it's, great. I, you know, filled in that wet area yep. it's really um, hard to where the brush habits. is going, uh, put gravel in there, and then and then cleaned up all around the buildings, mm -hmm. cut back everything. It looked really good. I just want to thank you for that. I noticed it Saturday when I was there, and Excellent. really appreciate all your all your work up there. So. It was just. This Thank you, Kevin. Looks just make really sure that Mike knows how much I appreciate it. Not a problem. And um, I know you guys will have to do it one more time, at least in uh, the end of August-ish, mid, mid to end right. of August. exactly. And then um, we'll see about September. We might be able to not get away with it, but um, it did save us, in fact, about $700. So thank you. Excellent. Good. Um, so we, um, the Weston Sampson sewer bill, we um, had voted a couple of weeks ago to pay it. Did you just want to discuss it a little bit? Maybe. Sure. Excuse me. We did not vote to pay it. Uh, no, Trevor and I voted to pay it. You voted no. Well, we voted to sign oh. it. And yeah. Hold we the voted to sign the warrant. Yeah. Hold no, we voted. Check. We voted well, to I'm sign it. I'm going to change it. You voted to sign it. You did not vote to pay it. You were going to hold the check. You were supposed until to until I was going to meet with him. Oh. And uh, with Wendy. I, yes, and I went to Wendy the following day and asked her to ask Kevin to meet in front of the board so there'd be no... Okay. Well, that's, that's so different than what I heard. Here we are. So, yeah. anyway, we have yes. cut the check and... So you've paid the bill? No. 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 We're still here. All right. Thank you. I, I I'm had here. more information, Kip. Um, uh, Bruce Hunter came in and felt that we should be paying it, and so... That's funny because he's the one that brought it to my attention saying we shouldn't, but that's all well, right. Anyway. Okay. Um, Kevin, would you like to have a little tell us about the bill? Well, um, I'm trying to see how I go about this. What I'd like to do, I actually like to read the memo. Okay. Because I feel that bits and pieces of the memo as it was read were misconstrued as to the presentation of such. So. Uh, I'm going to skip the first part where they just talk about, you know, what it is they're investigating the existing gravity sewer and to find out if they can go ahead and make Captain Lathrop um, from a pump station into um, gravity fed by abandoning the pump station. So this is the area that I'm, I'm looking at. Weston and Sampson performed field measurements. Means they went out and they did their field measurements. They surveyed it. We agree on that part. Okay. Within the project area, determine the elevation of the sanitary sewer between manhole 305 and sewer manhole 330A. And now this is where I think a few things were starting to get a little confusing. See attached figure one. All elevations are based on previously known assumed datum. Assumed datum is a surveying term. A basis for horizontal control surveys consisting of longitude and latitude of a certain point, the azimuth of the certain line from this point. They're not saying that they took their field measurements by a known local assumed datum. What that means is, is they use this part as their longitude and latitude to be able to go ahead and make a second. Make this chart. So with that being said, so it's not a deal of they just assumed all of these things because, again, they said that they went out and they physically did the field measurements. And I believe that Kip was feeling that the terminology here where all elevations were based on previously known local assumed datums was information that they had before, so they just regurgitated again. And that's not the case. Well, that's not necessarily, but 
That's okay. Uh, that's, I, I'm reading this and no, I'm looking at that, how it's written. No, I understand that, but that's not what I, written. that's not what I took it as, but that's okay. Continue. Well, that, that was how I was just receiving sure. it the way you were talking about it that night. That's fine. So anyway, so the depth of the flow line at 305A was provided by the town. I provided them one flow line because they could not get into it because it was frozen. Uh, da -da -da -da. We also located visible drainage structures. Drainage, not sewer. In the outfalls along North Main Street in the existing box culvert crossing Bloody Brook. Snow and ice buildup prevented accurate measurements or pipe locations and sizes at all catch basins, not sewer manholes along North Main Street. Sediment at the Bloody Brook prevented accurate measurements. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. So, however, they are con uh, confident in the overall development of the existing condition sown. A summary of the field gathered information is listed below, and they basically come to the determination that because of the slopes, the minimums, it will not hold, so it would be almost like a flat line. Okay. So with all of that being said, because again, my understanding, the way I was listening to one of the other meetings, was Kip was making it sound like the snow and ice built up kept them from getting inside the manholes. Well, that's not the case. It wasn't the manholes, it was the catch basins that they were having issues with. So with that being said, going over to their scope of work, perform field measurements along North Main Street, determine the uh, elevation of the existing sanitary, sanitary sewer systems and locate the position of existing stormwater collection systems. So they were able to locate the positions of the existing, but they couldn't do any measurements. Develop a profile of the existing sanitary system along North Main Street and Captain Lathrop beginning at the manhole prior to the existing, which is what they did right here. Prepare a conceptual uh, design replacement for the sanitary sewer systems, eliminating the pump station if feasible. They couldn't do that because it's not feasible. Prepare a preliminary uh, op, uh, opinion of probable construction costs for the replacement sanitary sewer. Again, they couldn't do that because it was infeasible. But what he did do is, again, following up on an email that I gave him because they weren't able to do this, and this email was March 29th, 2017, was what would it take to completely rebuild the pump station? Mm -hmm. uh, control system, and these are ballpark numbers, and he made it real perfectly clear these are very ballpark numbers. 75,000 for the, for the uh, control systems, 30,000 for the generator, 30,000 for the electrical pump system, 40,000, total 175. Quote, unquote, you may wish to consider providing a range of 150 to 120 to 200,000 total to be on safe. Of course, that can change with the discovery of detailed conditions, either to the positive or to the negative. And then he made his summary, which was this memorandum. So the way I feel is they provided us with a service. They came out on December 20th in the cold. They did their surveying. They made their designs. They gave me information. They gave me ballpark pricing on what it's gonna be. And I feel, excuse me, that we should pay the 3,500 because talking with Chris, I said, listen, I says, you know, I, I do agree with Kip that, you know, you weren't able to perform everything, so how about if we knock off 500 bucks? And he agreed with that. I feel personally that we got $3,500 worth of service. And that's about all I got to say about it. I don't know what to say. If, oh, what, uh, what do the catch basins have to do with any of this? It doesn't. Does it? Okay. What does rebuilding the pump station have to do with any of this? He, in turn, instead, because he could not go ahead and give me the probability of construction costs for the replacement sanitary sewer system, he decided to go ahead and attempt to give us something else, which was something else we we're going to end up having to look for anyway. So I thought he was trying to help me, but I guess maybe not. 
Okay, so you said that he could not get into Catch Basin 305A. Because it was frozen. Which was the one that I gave him. That's the one you gave him. That That's where it needed to go to. But he did go into Catch Basin 330A. That's on Captain Lathrop. That is correct. So we've got one on Captain Lathrop, and we have one, I'm just going to say, for no, the sake of this conversation, Bloody Brooks. So more, you know. I was going to say there's more so Catch got, Basin. There's more manholes in between, but yeah. Right. But you have... The catch basin, uh, Captain Lathrop here. Man, uh, the sewer. Sewer, yeah. Yeah, the, well, I'm sorry. Yep. The sewer pipe at Captain Lathrop here. Correct. You get the sewer pipe at Bloody Brook. Correct. There's only three things that these people need to know. This elevation, mm -hmm. this elevation, and the distance between. Correct. Okay. So out of these three things, they did two of them. They were able to get the catch basin, I'm sorry, the sewer manhole on mm -hmm. Captain Lathrop took your information on Bloody Brook and got the distance. With that information alone, they should have been able to sit right there and say, we can't do this. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. No, they, they, they fulfilled, they continued their, they, on they fulfilled their contract by fulfilling the They continued the on, and they, did, they provided us with a, a map that's just like the other stuff. It's yep. useless to us. It means nothing. Somebody right. spent time and did it. Yep. Uh, they didn't prepare the... Uh, the conceptual design because they can't do it. Correct. And they didn't do the cost breakdown because they couldn't do it. Correct. So they didn't do half of their work. And, and that's why I'm saying it's only $1,500, but why? I, I, it just, it, to me, it's just such bad business. Well, I think we asked for well, it, Kip, right? We no, asked. we didn't. All yes, we, asked, we did. It's right we here. Asked. It's the scope of work that was signed. This, is, this was that. a contract that the town signed, and this was part of the scope of work. It was part of the scope of work. It was part I, of I the agree. scope of work. So, you, of so let me ask you this. So, sure. no, never mind. Go ahead. No, please. It's, it's, uh, the way I look at this is you're driving your favorite old car, and the thing's skipping and popping and stuff like that. So you take it into the mechanic say, I want this thing fixed. And, you know, I'm gonna, it's going to be $4,000 even if i got to rebuild the motor. And you go down a week later and you pick up your car and things run like a charm. And he said, all I do is clean the carburetor and adjust the timing. Oh, that's great. How much owe you? $4,000. Well, well, you know why? You know, they, I said I'd get it doing even if I had to rebuild the motor for $4,000. Did you sign a contract? Did you have a scope of work? That's, this scope this, of work, this, this is, they this didn't. This is engineering things. These, this, this is why they have contracts. And... This is why they have the contracts. I'm just, I'll leave it at that. Can I, is your scope of work different than the one I have, Kevin? I, is yours dated the 23rd of yep, August, August 23rd, 23rd and it's made out to you? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, so as far as I'm concerned, they did part of one, they did two, they didn't do three, they didn't do four, and this memorandum is my, their thing. my question though is did they say if they couldn't do three and four, were they going to charge less money? I mean, the bill well, was maybe, for 4000 bucks, And I agree with your point that they should have said five minutes into this, can't be done, I'm not going to take your money. But for some reason, they decided to continue on with what we asked for mm -hmm. at what we told them we would pay them. So I, and then they reduced it 500 bucks. So I think we should pay the bill and do a much better job of asking for a scope of work next time and putting well, a dollar amount to each item because if they didn't put a dollar amount next to each item, you know, so, I mean, they, would they have right. done huge schematics for four grand? I mean, what, how much does engineering cost? I don't know. I personally, for ignorance, I don't know what we would have expected. If, if they could have done all of that that's on that list, they would have only charged 4000 for it? What would we have gotten? I don't know what if, we would have gotten. If it was feasible, they yeah. would have given us another page like this that had just different elevations, and it would have showed where everything was going to be laid out. That's what we would have got. Then we probably would have got, I don't know if it would have been one, two, or four pages. We would have got a cost breakdown. Of detail. Of detail. Well, but it would be... it. I guess it's the way they do it. Like Kevin said, that he asked about the rebuild and says a generator is going to be 30,000 this is going to be you know they're 
their estimates. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just, they well, were. okay, I've done it a bunch of times, so I think this is what's going to be. It's gonna be. Right. When you really get down to it, it might be more or it might be less, but mm -hmm. they Depending usually on go on the high side, right. so they don't, it's not more, it's less. Gotcha. Uh, you know, and, and that's, that's my point. But we didn't, do, we didn't make the scope of work. They did. Correct. And, you know. And that was our mistake. No, that's yeah, all right. That's well, it's, 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 it's okay. They, 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 they did it. Well, we, we're... I mean, wouldn't we ask for what we want? We tell them what the problem is. We tell them what the yeah, problem we is. We work with them to develop yeah. that, and they explain and then exactly what that means. And yeah, and, and, and I agree with this. But my whole problem is that they didn't do it. And being engineers, they should have known right then and there, this mm -hmm. can't happen, and stopped. Gotcha. But they didn't. You know, yep. And that's what irritates me. I agree. I'm irritated about it, too. And I don't think you reward somebody, you know. You're not rewarding. Not you're paying. You're paying. You're you're your you're paying a contract. So just to kind of maybe go a little one step a little further, because of this particular situation, what we've done now with Weston and Sampson, because actually they are it's another subject we need to talk about. It's a landfill. So as each of the tasks are done, or each of the tasks that we're requesting, now we're having a breakdown of what the cost of each task is. Okay. And if we don't have the task performed, then we're not going to pay the bill. This is the way it is now. Good. That is not the way it was before. You sign a contract. So when you sign a contract, let me ask you, you sign a contract with the bank to pay the bank, and say, well, you know what? I really don't think the house is really worth that much money, so I'm only going to give you $20,000 less. That's different. If Why you sign different? A, con a contract is a contract is a contract. But if the bank says they're going to do certain things and they don't fulfill their part of the contract, you don't pay them. Depends on the fine print, right? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, uh, my, uh, as far Bank's as I'm going to go in this one right yeah. now is, is my opinion is, is we should be paying this. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I, I, we can talk about this till the cows come home. Um, I, again, this is my opinion. I'm going to stick with my opinion. So um, can I ask you a question? So you've yeah, developed a um, protocol going forward for engineering stuff mm -hmm. that you've got tasks broken Each out. Each task is going to be broken down, and you will give us a of estimated budget amount for each. And if each one of those is not performed, then it will be removed. Very similar to Weston and Sampson. Again, with the landfill, they were trying to put in the task of doing the inspection that Jan does for us. So I told them to remove task number seven, which is what they, seven? They, they used to do it, but it, we didn't know where it was in the, in the so and scope. Jan said Correct. she does it for this amount. So I Correct. asked him to find out how much how it much would that they charge, was. and it was infinite. Huge savings. It was, there was $2,300 compared to yeah. $230. Wow. Right. So Huge. we switched this year to having her so, do those. Because Jan did it two years ago. Mm. So at a lower cost. Hmm. And I'll be honest with you, it, it was in the contract, and I didn't see it last year. I didn't yeah. see it. it Want to blame somebody, blame me, because I'm the one that did not completely go through the contract. You know, yeah. Carol, this is really not much different than what was going on at the school roof time and time again, where they say, mm -hmm. well, it was in the contract. It was part of the contract, you know, and it, and it, it just wasn't. I mean, even as far as the extra meetings, you know, they, they blackmailed the town. And we had to sign that thing, but I, I had to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. We end up not paying anything for those meetings because they didn't exist. And it's the same thing. I, I, I realized there was a contract, but these people have an obligation not to take advantage of their customers. And the town's been good to them. You know, it's, I think it, it, well, you know, the it, town's provided them with a lot of work. And that, you know, Right from the get-go, like I said, there were three numbers that they needed, regardless of how they came up with them. They could have looked at that and said, called Kevin and said, look, this, this isn't going to work. You know, I we're going to send you a letter. I agree completely. They should. I, they, uh, I do agree with that part. Yes. I don't know why, I, I'm but, not why they didn't. I don't know why they'd want to sour a relationship with a oh, town that's giving them money so many, oh, over for $500 or 1000 bucks. It's not worth it. So. Um, Plus, I've got about 43 hours worth of my time. Into yes, trying and, to but configure I, what this I is. I guess my feeling is it's also, I mean, we've gotten over the years, we have certainly gotten a lot of free engineering from them with the idea that they are providing 
you know, that when they the work came in, the work. yeah, that, mm -hmm. and so I, I mean, I also feel like, and it was our fault for not having a broken down contract. So I don't feel that, um, I mean, my feeling is kept that we, for a really less than a thousand dollars, we need to move on. It's not less than a thousand, it's 1500. No, because they reduced it by fifteen hundred. Oh, they reduced it by five hundred. I mean five hundred. So, and, and there's really, well, I don't even think they're worth the two thousand. But that's what I thought. Or if we we split the bill and gave them two thousand dollars, they should be happy. I know you're not going to be happy, but we it's it's not worth our time. So I'm making a motion that we send out the check and um, just move on and take Ke Kevin's recommendation. I, I want to be sure that in the in the future on all this stuff, like you said, you've got yeah. a protocol. Scoop, scope of work and items are detailed a lot more than just a I think a what, what, what has happened, Kevin, is that, you know, we had such a good relationship with Dan Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And once he left, we, did, we, we assumed the same service relationship and service, and we absolutely cannot. And I mean, it's no different, and it's Kip pointed out, it's no different than any of the other firms that we've worked well, with. Well, like he said, it's just yeah. the right thing that they should yeah. have done. And, it, and it, you know, I, know. I don't, again, I don't know all the backstory, but just under, yeah. I, I get where Kip is coming from, and it just doesn't, it doesn't feel right. Um, it doesn't. Well, but no, I, it, it, so, it, 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 I also it don't want any more time feel spent. Right. It's just wrong to reward somebody for for something bad. Yeah. And, and I don't, I, I just can't wrap my head around the fact that. Well, let's just pay it and not be. No, you know, for I, I, but well, Kip, I mean, the, the difference is that people who can't pay their property Kip, taxes this year. Kip, you've got Kip. a legal contract that you've got to pay. We are and you on this. It. Yes, we signed this so contract, how do you, how do you and we're talking that? literally. They didn't, they didn't Kevin fulfill. reduced they the didn't bill. Fulfill their contract. And Kevin where do we reduced have the just just because you just. And 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 it's how do you how do you go about not paying it? Simple. You send them a check for two thousand dollars, and then they and then if they they want to take us to court, you can find. And I'd have no problem telling any judge in the country, look at this is what they were supposed to do. All they needed to do, Your Honor, is get these three numbers and they would have known it didn't. And the judge yet is they gonna can, say, and well, the judge is gonna look contract? at them and say, Why did you keep going? Why because did you continue that was this work? Scope of work and that was the contract that you signed. That's the no, hard part. No, they exactly wouldn't. The you judge signed would say. a lump yeah. sum contract, not an itemized contract yeah. where we just pay by That's phase right. of that's why it's our all the way around. It's it's our was our responsibility. And we, we were the ones at fault. Wow. Well, it was a lump sum contract, Kip. Yeah, You've well, got to get over that. You've got to I, understand I, I, municipal finance. Right. You know, we, it, you can say you go to court, we spend, spend a lawyer, and we t spend our time going to court. Kevin spends his time. And guess what? We've spent tons of money extra for nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's why I wanted we cut the check last to make sure that we didn't have to run a special town meeting in the fall just to pay off this amount, which would cost us more than the actual bill. So, you know, we need to pay attention, and it was our fault, okay? That's just the way it is. Don't get me into that. It wasn't my fault. I didn't you say it was your fault. Or to do this. I didn't well, say, you say it was your fault. Well, you say our fault. It, no. The town is at fault, okay? It's your <laughs> fault now. Yes, yes. Okay. We I'm recognize not. that there is a problem with the system, and we've attempted to put in procedures to make sure thank that you. doesn't happen again. And thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate that not it was a learning experience. And also, like I said, it was just, you know, part of Dan Lawrence, um, you know, having to change how we <coughs> work with them. Kip, is there another um, engineering firm that we're looking at? Yeah. Yes. I'm speaking to three of them right thank now. Thank you. I mean, it seems, I, I just can't imagine that they would want a sour relationship over a small bill like that. But it just, it, I mean, it seems, it obviously seems that they don't, didn't really care to work with us other than 500 bucks and on such a small item such as this. And That's I know right. they got to pay their guys and they have insurance and they got to sure. drive out and I get all that, you know, and, it, and they have a cost of business and it is what it is, but I, I just, you know, and, and I, got, I don't know, they haven't been here long enough to know the history of all that they've done beforehand and kind of how that we're getting treated now, but I just think... It's, it's a substantially different. And I, I'm glad yeah. that we're, you know, going to yeah. look at other items, you know, other firms to maybe to help us. 
Second, so, second your motion. All those um, in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I'm opposed. Okay. And that's fine, Kip. I, I totally get it, but. So with just... that being said, Kip, would you mind taking this uh, environmental consulting services from Weston and Sampson and send it, because there's basically a scope of work in here, and send it to your other people to find out whether you want these other people to go ahead and take care of our landfill annual post-closure monitoring report that's required by DEP. So here's all the things that they would be doing for that. So What's, if you want to go ahead and ship it out that, to them. What time, what time you, frame are you looking for? I, I got plenty of time. Um, they don't, this really doesn't, this came out in January. It's ongoing. But it's an also ongoing be advised item. that what is in here is collecting all of the data of the water and gas samples in the whole nine yards. So you almost kind of got to think about I, jumping on this soon. But the other side of the coin is, is feasibly if the other company would like to take their data and produce this manual, that is completely on how you guys want to deal with it. Um, and I will tell you the two companies that we um, uh, changed from to Weston and Samson because, um, and just to make sure you're not soliciting from them, because they were actually not doing the job and we were almost fined by DEP. We were in a lot of trouble with DEP for Yeah, a while. so we switched to Weston and Samson to make sure it actually got done. Is that, just to let you guys know, I, I'm not, all I'm, at this point, I've just contacted yeah, other understood. firms. To, and that's to, fine. That we're looking at yeah. this and, 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 and getting bring some them ideas. In and have right. a, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's, it's not, it's a good it's idea not uh, and I'm really happy about that because I don't have the same commitment to us in Sampson now that Dan. Well, it'll keep them honest. Him. You know, you go ahead and you you bring other people they, in, they and maybe they sharpen this. their pencil. They, uh, there was no question about this, but so the, the, at um, some point you just have to but say it. Just ends. you're advised, the information that is in there is testing wells of 20 groundwater wells, 11 gas wells, two water drinking wells, and three surface water sample areas which is required by DEP. And do they test it multiple times a year? Correct. And then, and then, and, and then all, of, all, all of the results are in here. Every, and they send, and they file them for us. And they, everything gets DEP. filed. DEP. Um, they, they do up their, their, their little tables. Um, well, that's the budget. So the question is, do they do landfill monitoring? What's sure. the budget services? on that? Kevin, so. is everything in those, um, that, this right here would actually be the contract that you would have to sign. Okay, so that has so, all the so information. So this right here should be your complete and total scope of work. Okay. I brought you this report right here so you could see a sample of exactly what needs to be produced. Okay. So I figured between this and this, if you gave this to somebody, the only thing that I would request is on the very last page when it comes to the tasks mm -hmm. to black out the budget estimates. Right. So that way they're you get not... A number looking at somebody else's numbers. What, sure. what are those numbers? And is that a yearly contract? This is a yearly, yeah. Um, site coordination access, 3110. Well replacement installation, 197. Well surveys, 1600. Uh, groundwater surface, drinking water samplings, 58. Um, laboratories, uh, another 15. Gas well monitoring, like another three. Mm -hmm. uh, the actual report, which I yeah. think is a little pricey, but 10,000. And then uh, any additional services as needed, uh, time and material basis only right. of $2,500. So is there, a, is there a total on that? Total $61,027. Per year. And that we'd have to do that regardless, right? Because you're yes. capping a lands fill. That's correct. So, and the only way to get away from that would be to it, completely dig up the dump and and remove everything. And remove everything. Once but the it, again, the other issue is, is you're still going to have residual that's already in the groundwater that's right. still moving. Right. So, you know, when we went ahead and we took care of the issue over by Melnick's, fortunately, that went ahead and that stopped the Department of Health being involved. Mm -hmm because if the Department of Health became involved at that point in time, um, that number right there would probably turn into $200,000 right. um, a year, minimum. And Weston so. and Samson, I have to say, Weston and Samson was, they came to our rescue. Yeah. They, they did a good job for us. You know, our, our 
do, should should we have somebody else be looking at stuff and let them be well aware that other people are looking at stuff so they yeah, sharpen the that pencils? Makes sense. I, I, I don't There's have any There's no problem, problem with that whatsoever. No. But the only thing that does concern me is to get the word out that we're extremely difficult to work with. And if we're extremely difficult to work with, I'm not saying they would, but I know there's a possibility of the little pain in the butt to work with. Yeah. Another 8% on top of whatever they're going to do. Well, if we get a few different estimates, you know, and see where we're at, right. um, then we may find out that they're the best deal in town. So, but yeah, like I said, the scope of work, everything is right there. And, and the actual document that has to be produced is here so that way they can you can see it exactly what they need to do and you can actually hand it to them too this is what you need to do can you do this sure. do you have the ability to do all of the well testing do, are you the LSP -E, LSP EDs I think it's I think it's LSP EDs I, I could be wrong but I believe that's the the 12 Ackerman that they use um, so that way everything is exactly the same apples for apples not apples for dump trucks. Mm -hmm. It's got to be the same. Well, we have to make sure the report goes in. Correct. If we screw up again, I, we're not going to get. Um, we're not, we're not going to get the second chance like we did no, last time. No, we didn't. We, we won't. Didn't we up. worked very the hard. No, the I other engine. No, that's why they gave us a second chance. But we had. We worked really hard to convince them that, that it was, was not our firm firm that did fault. They, it. they sat yeah. there. We're sorry. I was there. Right. <laughs> Uh, wow. No, I mean, but we, it was a real effort to get them to forgive us. And so we can't mess up again, at least until somebody else retires and new people come on. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I'm not going down and begging again. Snowplow contractors. Okay. Kevin, next item. Snow you plow. tell me. I have no oh, idea you have, we have, you have <laughs> snowplow. You don't have our agenda? <laughs> you had, you had snowplow. It. Kip, contract Kip wanted to. Oh, no. oh well, you did. Yeah, okay. I wanted to talk about. Um, I, I talked with. I'm sorry. And I, and I, I thought it was Kevin. No. Um, I was interested in talking about hiring, having Kevin hire another person for the highway department um, that maybe has some building background that we could use to do building maintenance and especially the, the amount of stuff that's going to need to happen over the senior center. Or the church, you know, there are things that you know, we could Deerfield do. Deerfield Community and, Center? Uh, yes. You got it. Not the Senior Center? That's Deerfield right. Community Center? Community yes. Slash. Thank you. And uh, so anyways, um, you know, given the, the amount of equipment we, I thought we have, uh, we could take over doing the snow plowing without hiring contractors. Any? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you know, the, the contractors, subcontractors have only been around for a short amount of time, with the exception of some people in Old Deerfield. Um, and we have, what, six employees? Correct. So if we have seven employees, we have the equipment, I think that, uh, you know, it could get done. I... Um, so, Kevin? Personally, myself, I, could, could we reduce? We could. Will we completely el eliminate? I do not believe so. Personal opinion? Um, I've been doing the snow removal here in town for seven years. Uh, the past seven years, at the very least, there's been four pickups in South Deerfield. There's been two one tons, sometimes three, depending on the storm, in Old Deerfield, nine foot plows, one 33,000 GVW truck with a 10 foot plow, and one medium sized loader to take care of that in the town. Ballpark right now, when we do a round, what we consider around, mm -hmm. we start in the center of South Deerfield here in the village. Yeah. We clean up the village and then everybody goes other directions. Okay. We have some of these contractors go with our larger trucks to clean um, um, intersections because you, we, we don't want somebody in one of those large trucks trying to clean the end of 116 and North Main Street or excuse me, South Main Street. You don't want to be doing that again on Sugarloaf Street. So, and you don't want to be doing that on either side of River Road. You can't see. It's time consuming. Not all of the, uh, at that point in time, most of the trucks did not have power angle plows. 
we still have two trucks that are still fixed plows. So to, if anybody's you done any bigger, plowing, the yeah, the big trucks. So if anybody's ever done any plowing with a fixed plow, it's extremely difficult, especially when you're trying to clean intersections, the smaller roads. Um, so that's what they do in South Deerfield, or excuse me, elsewhere besides the old Deerfield area. Old Deerfield area, uh, I'm sorry, back to where I was, basically around is about five hours. Around for Old Deerfield is about four hours. So, so now one, if we were to take wait, over wait, everything. Kept, so, sorry. Yeah. So one round is five hours in South Deerfield. And everywhere else besides so, Old Deerfield. Okay. And then Old Deerfield Old Deerfield is about four, four hours. hours. Okay. So if you were to go ahead and you were to go ahead and you take both, you're going to be looking at nine hours to do it once. So then you come back again nine hours later, which these guys have not had a break. They have not had anything to eat unless they take it with them. They haven't had anything to drink unless they take it with them because most of the time there's no places to stop anywhere. They come back in, they grab something to eat, and they go back out again. So now, you know, you're going to be at 18 hours on a standard storm. And then as soon as normally, historically, when we're done with our rounds, when we're done clean up pulling irons, now we'll go ahead and we'll spend another two and a half to three hours going out and doing light salting. So now you're at 22 hours. The liability of somebody getting hurt, somebody falling asleep behind the wheel, is huge. One person that you get into an accident with, if you hurt them or kill them, that's, it's, it's, it's priceless. I mean, you, the amount of money that, that the town, well, I don't know, maybe not, because the town's only get sued by so much, but. We still lose a lot. We'd still lose a lot. Um, and then that goes back to, let's just say hypothetically, we've got a storm that's coming in. We'll call it just an inch an hour, okay? So an inch an hour, 10 hours later, I got 10 inches of snow in the center of town over here, or the center of the, the what do you call it? Oh, I know. And People then we need to go ahead and do it again. So my question is, is if we do this, our timing that we're doing, the roads are going to be less. My opinion is the safety of the public is not going to be what it is because we're not able to take and bust open the roads that we are. Could we reduce? Yeah. Is there something else we talked about this year? Could we go ahead and we put a wing plow on one of the trucks and maybe go ahead and cut another one loose to do something else? That's a possibility. Sir. Could, um, so right now, how, how many guys do you have doing it right now? Like, do you have, every, does everybody hit, hit their truck? Everybody, uh, so me included. You included. Yeah, so it, like I don't, I, I'm not at home and I don't pick up the phone and say, hey, go plowing. Right, you know, right, I, you're I'm out, in right? a truck I've also seen. myself. I know. But how so. many guys is that? That's six? Six. Six guys. Six. And then, um, and then I've got another, how many, how many six, basically another six. Another six that we Another contract six that we now. would contract, correct. Six and, and pieces Northfield. of equipment. Correct. People with pieces people, of equipment. People with pieces of equipment. equipment. Correct. So there's six, um, just, oh, no, there's, there's some up in Old Deerfield. Correct. Plus we augment then we three, augment your we augment down. some over on this side too. Because, again, you know, some of the areas, basically what we did was is when I became superintendent, I went ahead and I switched places with one of the guys. Instead of a big truck, yep. I take a little truck. I still got the same route. I right. still take care of uh, partial of Mill Village. Um, I take care of the, <clears throat> excuse me, the two side roads off of Mill Village. I go ahead and I go up uh, Lee Road and then I start hammering out all the little ones off to the side and yeah. we deal with the other little condo areas. Um, yeah. You know, so the, the pickups need to augment the larger trucks. And the only thing I'm going to say about this, and I'm going to steadfast, is if I lose the contractors, I personally take no responsibility for any safety for anyone in this town. I relinquish it complete and total because I'm, I will be stripped of my ability to do my job properly. It would just take a little longer maybe, but I don't know. That's, it, again, yeah. no responsibility on my end, well, zero. I don't think there really is anyways, but that's okay. <laughs> that, there's no responsibility on my end because well, they're smaller than the town. If, if, if somebody Seriously? crashes their car, they're not holding you responsible because there's snow in the road. Uh, Talk to the police department, and I tell you what, this year I will start recording all of the calls that I get on a normal basis 
with the abilities that I have at this point in time. Actually, Kevin, I, I do want to say that um, since you've taken over, um, the calls that I get are usually the roads are really good compared to other towns. Um, so I, I just want you, I just want to pass it on because usually, I mean, I used to get calls. Yeah, I used to get calls. How come Old Deerfield's getting plowed and South Deerfield's waiting? And, you know, all the time, different calls and complaints. It's not saying it's complaint-free, but right. well, there's now I, I, I am getting uh, what the calls that I'm getting, though, are the roads are so so good in Deerfield compared to other towns, and I just wanted you to know. Well, and and so we do appreciate when do we, that. When do we start getting subs? And I mean, no. how do we? <laughs> what's that? Oh. He came to me already about we need to. No, I mean, no, I mean, when, no. How long has it been doing it? Williams has been doing it for twenty some odd years. Okay. And historically, in the past, Williams has been augmenting the down here, okay. but everything got kind of split apart once once Williams wasn't doing it anymore. So that's oh. when Grulinski stepped in okay. to take over the areas that Williams. he was Williams was sending the trucks down to this end of town. Yeah. So because like I said, once 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 Sandy said that's it, we're done. He just was then then we had to we, we had to go run around and find what we're gonna do. But they used to get up there and do, you know, stuff because they were that end of town. Yeah, yeah, so he'd come out of his driveway, I guess, and do old Deerfield, and oh man, we used to get phone calls all the time on that. Because he was on top of that. He would plow earlier, I think, right. than what we did down here. What did we spend? What did we spend this last year on? You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I tried to put that together and I couldn't because I needed to ask, because um, I can't go strictly off my snow and ice budget. What I can tell you is I spent Close to a hundred thousand in sand and salt mm -hmm. is went a hundred and two thousand over above that. I cannot tell you exactly how much of that is actual contractors, mm -hmm. for the simple fact is this year what we did was we finally recognized the fact that instead of trying to take the nuts and the bolts in the blades, in in the the pistons and anything else, the spinners anything that had to do with snow removal now comes out of the snow removal budget. Okay. So this year, that's why, because last year was 157,600, roughly ballpark numbers, call it 160,000 um, year of before. But you put maintenance in a, in a different category. Correct. At that time. Maintenance. Correct. Okay. What's your chapter 90 mileage? Uh, 83. I just not too checked on Safari here. 82 is what 82? Yeah. But, I mean, Sorry, I was off by That's off. not necessarily Chapter 90, that but mean? that's... What's chapter, uh, cha chapter 90 is, is the uh, entity within the state of Massachusetts that produces or uh, gives us money right. for roadways and things like that. Based on yeah. What did you mean by 82? 80, 82 that's, miles it's, of roads it's, that is town oh, that road that we're responsible for. Oh, because you see I what happens is... Cents is, an hour or something like that. I didn't, no, no, no. Well, what, that's miles. how many miles of road we claim as town roads. What they do is, is, is we're paid by how many, how many miles of road we have. Mm -hmm. So if we increased our roadway by 20 miles, our Chapter 90 money would go up higher. Like when because the, that's how it's um, based upon. When um, the street is accepted for the condo development, that will, will be That will be another miles, whatever another mile seven tenths of a yeah, mile right, or, whatever. or whatever it may be you have to make sure that we get you can claim that claim does that. the state break out the difference in chapter 90 money for snowing snow plow removal as well no no it's oh, no, no, no no because they don't pay so. for snow removal because all right, all right. So, yeah. like if i ask for a plow yeah. from chapter 90 yeah. they say no oh really wow. yeah but like the last dump trucks that that sean was able to buy he got combination bodies which means we got a sander and a dump truck all in the same body Which that was allowed. Uh, but if we asked for a truck with a sander only, only, they would pay for the cab and the chassis, but they will not pay, pay for, for the sander. sander. I, the, that's, I, I don't know it was why. for road maintenance. Road maintenance. Yeah. And yeah. they don't consider sanding as maintenance. Nope. Huh. Or plowing. That's or plowing, because you can't get plows either. That, I, I couldn't tell you that part. Nope. I don't know. Somebody else's. So just there. So what do you, 
What do you think you could get by with this year in terms of numbers of contractors? I'm, to be honest with you, I'm still looking at the same. Um, well, if I had an additional person, um, I could probably, I could probably drop a, a big truck off the other end of town. That's it. Other than that, no. I'm still looking for my pickups to do my cleanups. I'm still looking for the pickups on that end, and I'm still looking for a loader that end of town because you get the drifting. You have to worry about the drifts going on Mill Village. You have to worry about the drifts going out into the meadows. You have to worry about going up to, I can't remember the exact name of the road, but going out to where Chucky Hall used to live, which are other things we need to talk about at some point in time, some of the other roads that we have in town. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's time consuming and you have to do it. You okay. know? Getting back to Kip's point, um, do you think it's valuable to look at another position for the other items he's talking about, or, what, or were you just thinking that would be the only benefit to getting an, uh, another person, or would you do you oh, think no, it's a benefit it, it to would, get another person? It would he was, be a benefit to have somebody to do the, the building, building stuff, That'd all be the huge. other stuff, and then they like that would be available. Would be another <laughs> supplement would, for, for the snow plowing. Yeah. It would, that would that would be phenomenal. Yeah. But Most to be able to have that one person that eliminate all the other right contractors, oh, I I personally don't see it. Okay, I'll do it. I wish I could plow. I, well, oh, um, I think something it's something that we, agenda. I think it's worth to have some more discussion about yeah, additional agree. person. Well, um, something else. And figuring out a way we can pay for it. Because it, it does make sense. I mean, we're taking on a couple big projects for sure. And, um, and, the, and the maintenance is getting oh. to be bigger. Mm -hmm. But maybe have, we can do something. I mean, I don't know how many years left that Bob Lesko has. Well, I, so uh, yeah. maybe we could do something where the schools ultimately could um we could take in because the problem is we don't have a you know mm. a real um, I, I don't necessarily I think i want to get involved with the schools i mean okay. other than the elementary whatever we're responsible for do you um yeah but some, some but how many guys like do you the have capital might, stuff um, and do you uh, have any guys close to retirement or, I, or is there yeah me no just kidding. <laughs> there's just a, there's a lot of small yeah, things that we could uh, one we could have mike there and he's probably a couple of years he will well, it depends on the day you yeah. know yeah. <laughs> there's, sure. there's some days he says two years and there's other days lately he's been saying five because yeah, he enjoys it so good well we like him then you know i believe as soon as he gets to his 80 percent, then he'll probably go ahead and you know head down the road which i believe is four more years would be I'll talk no. to you I'm just thinking of like right, building up replacements, think, you know, somebody like getting acclimated, though, knowing the crews, and then building their capacity and in town to work, and then somebody else leaving. You know, just always exactly. having a back bench um, yeah. of people. Not that we have tons of money to do that, but just it's always good to plan forward for right. people that are. You know, so think about the kind of person and position, and what you could do with this person. And, I'd love and, another me. <laughs> yeah. I would. I'm sure. Somebody can do plumbing, carpentry, electrical. Well, Kevin, I, but I, I, it's I not, know you're... You're, you're not going to find somebody for I know. $14 an hour. Right. I, I know That's that the you... That's the other side of the coin. You need can we pay you $14 an hour? <laughs> but, Kevin, I, I know you work like 60 yeah. or 70 hours a week, and a lot of stuff you're doing on the weekends, yeah. you know, and um, truly you have, you know, potential burnout too. So if you could think about this as an additional person... Mm. And then think about the kind of, you know, what this person would look like. I mean, I think it's really worth more discussion. And oh, I would, I would absolutely love it. I mean, the simple fact is, is you know, it's, it's tough to be able to do everything we still do, try and perform the services we're trying to I perform know. for the town, and still try and take care of the buildings at the same time. It's, it's, I, I know. I mean, you're con continually pulling somebody off of something else to do something else you know but it's I know. it's it's just part of the and you only have what it's, you it's have. part of the job yeah. you know you it's, it, we recognize that fact so. you know if, if we had 50 people we'd need 52 people if we right. had 100 people exactly. we need 103 you people you know it's 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 like when somebody makes 100 bucks well they want to make 150 bucks right you know it's that's human nature yeah it is it's human nature so when um, i was in wilbraham i created a facilities manager position that our building inspector was doing and it just was way too much right and but we were also taking care of the elementary school oh so right well that's yes. but that's what made me think because you know like Kip, we've had a little bit of Actually, experience and i, I in discussions we had four <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. so i, I right. don't know there's a lot of schools there yeah so it's worth talking about some more okay yeah so um, thank as you far so. as contractors when when do you have to get 
Do you want to put that was my in next, general? That was my next general, because actually I went to Wendy and I was like, you know, I says, right now we've got a contract, quote unquote, that has expired, but we had a contract for FY17 for Old Deerfield. Right. There is no contract on what we use on this end of town. Right. You need to start doing apples for apples, oranges for oranges. Whatever you can make one person do, you need I to make the other person do. I thought we kind of agreed do. that, I mean, I think we were a little surprised that there wasn't contract down here. So yeah. I think you need to do that. And and the other thing that kind of, um, well, I just completely lost my mind. Were they just hourly before? Yeah, just down here, yeah. they would just come in and whatever. You Correct. Yeah. yeah we'd, we'd call them in. We'd give an hour's notice right. and say, I need you, you know. Everything we need you at nine o'clock. So right. as soon as they roll in at nine o'clock, that's when they're on the clock. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we get through, as soon as we can kick them loose, we say, "Okay, you're kicked loose." And we have and the insurances and all the correct. other items. No, thank you. That's what I was trying to get at. The insurance that we had on this last contract was a little steep, one million and three million okay. for snow plowing. Um, I've gone through and I've looked at other towns. Yeah. And uh, we are like two to three times higher. Any, I, I think the reason um, I, I, I agree because I, I think we're you know because of the our limit Is and you can correct me but because of our municipal limit I think we can only be sued for um, but four, this four but this is their their for damages that they do right not right. you know so so in other words like if they run yeah, somebody over that's very, completely all on them because yeah, they're a contractor but, insurance we can we could probably lower what we've asked could for. We, well, the and, thing is with the insurance, all the insurance policies should have the town of Deerfield as listed. An listed. Oh, right. on them. Right. And, and that's, that's the big difference because you're right, the town might only be liable for a certain dollar amount because of the municipality, mm -hmm. uh, but the other ones, uh, they're not, you know. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Would we have Mima look at that? I mean, uh, not me, um, Maya. Maya. And just would they have a common like what we would what other towns charge or am I already, barking up the wrong tree? Looking. Oh, you yeah. have okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, <clears throat> good. Well, also, I won't uh, ask again. what would be wrong with putting out? Um, I guess you call it an RFP. Say that we're looking for people mm -hmm. to bid on you know plowing and get see get bids mm -hmm. by an hour later just say just saying okay we're going to give you right exactly dollars an hour because one of, one of the other places that at some of the other towns and this is wendy and i actually had the discussion on this and the town actually put it out and said okay you know what we need 15 pieces of equipment and we're going to pay each we're going to pay this much for each one of these and i'm like okay well 25 companies come in how do you pick who it is you know my personal opinion is is this is the equipment that we're looking for you tell me what you're willing to take for your equipment. Exactly. Right. You know, but have it a broad. So does that limit some of the people that are out there because they don't have all the equipment to be able to take care of everything? Do we want to look at piecemeal? I mean, there's yeah. a lot of things you want to think about. Sure. We right. want to look at one sure. contractor. We want to look at two contractors. We want to look at a contract for just strictly up there. Do we want to look for strictly down here? You want to lump. You know, it's, it's, there's like a lot of, leaving, lot of leaving it thought broad, that like needs to come into play into this. So that way, when we actually put out the RFP, we're not going, oh, God, you know, that's really not what we wanted. You mm -hmm. know, I, I want this one and done. I don't want to have to do this. And I know it's July, but then it's August, then it's right. September, yeah. and usually most snow contractors. They're done by October. September, end, end, middle of the end of September, they already say, know what they're doing. It for the has, year. the state has been sucking them up so much that. So, it's usually September. But I do know problems. that if we put an RFP, I can think of at least two two companies that could probably handle it. Mm -hmm. All of it. All of it. I believe. I I don't want to call an RFP or, or bid or whatever. It's not however you want. Required to be bid under the state right. law, so I'd rather not do it. Yeah. Um, rather come up with our own bidding type of a yep. procedure and just so however however you want to go about it I, I just don't feel comfortable saying hey you know uh, okay you've got we're gonna match the state you've got a one ton you've got a nine foot plow on there we're gonna pay you 78 bucks an hour right uh, if you put a sander on it we're gonna we're gonna give you right. 87 dollars an hour no ask them to bid you know so but it's not a requirement to bid for a snow plow for snow removal you know, it doesn't have to be bid. 
Well, how do you want to handle it, Wendy? So well, how, how you guys go about it? it? Well, I found a bunch of possible scenarios and right. sent them to Kevin, and we can okay. look at them. And We're kind of been going back and what forth works on Because it's certain, you know, it works differently in different communities. Some have nobody. They have to go outside the community. Well, Some are cities, and, you know, and it's, it's very variable. So we have I, to sit and talk mm, and go through what works best. I kind of worry about all eggs in one basket, too, and then, you know, something happens or whatever, you know. I would just think, you know, it's nice to have maybe two. Right. Uh, so you can well, that was one of the things that, you know, because Wendy went and she, she forwarded me three, four, five different towns to do different things. And, yeah. and Pembroke, I really like Pembroke's. Um, simple fact is, is they put in very specific um, tasks. Yeah. Um, this is how you sign in. This is how you sign out. You know, if, if you're down for more than 35 minutes, uh, you know, you're docked an hour. Yeah. Um, you know, there it's it's there's no question. Right. It's, you know, it's there, if, if somebody's got a question, they know read your is. contract. Yeah. This is what it says. This is the contract you signed. This is what you have to do. Okay. So. That sounds and good. And they feel probably better because they know what they're expecting. Because they know exactly them. what their expectations are at that yeah. point. Okay. So. Well, thanks for looking into that. So. I, I guess the consensus would be then to move ahead, right? With a kind of a mm -hmm. how, whatever bid sure. kind of scenario. Because we do need Wendy, Wendy, and Wendy and Kevin will work something out. What out. To do. Yep. On Whether you do the Pembro Pembroke one or whatever, you'll sort it out. We'll okay. figure out what works best for the department and the needs of the citizens and Great. the culture okay. of the plowing community. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Kevin. Is thank there anything you. else you wanted to discuss? Yeah, actually, can I, can sure. I grab it while yeah. I got you uh, here? Sure. Yep. All right. Um, I was talking with Jane Treasure about the town common. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So there are a few things, and I'm not sure, you know, because I, I saw the minutes of the meeting from, I believe it was February, yep. but there wasn't anything in there that said yay or nay, um, and I'm be honest with you I'm looking for direction okay because I don't want to go ahead and start a project and all of a sudden find out I'm not supposed to be doing this project mm -hmm. um, one of the things that she's looking at one of the easiest ones right now is gonna be the signs yes. you know there are a lot of signs there you know I'm looking at one hour parking is that enforced no go ahead take it out the no parking here to corner well it's already lined so there's no parking space there you can take that one out um, there's that other one that's just a regular, it looks like a broken pipe. That has yes. to stay because that actually belongs to the gas company. And that's some type of event. It's a broken oh, pipe. Oh, <laughs> it's not a pole, it's a vent. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's it? a vent with, <laughs> and what, I believe Jane reached out to somebody at um, Berkshire, gas. Berkshire Gas, and they're going to try and recreate that sign again okay. that was actually on top of it, which I think would be kind of cool. Yep. Uh, exactly what it said, I don't know, but what little you can read of it. it looks it like it's, yeah. it's kind of decent. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have gone through, oh, and the last one is this heart safe community. Um, I did notice we do have one out here. Already. Basically, does that just mean we got ADs here in town? Yeah. yeah okay. That's, so that's, just about every town in the years old, yeah. country has ADs. So would anybody have an issue if I pulled the heart safe communities? No, because we have one out here. Yeah, we okay. have right out here. We don't um, have to, obviously, we the only other two signs on there that obviously, well, there's a few on signs that have to stay because they're the state signs. Yeah. This is 91, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And the only other two blue signs that are on there, one points to here and the other one points to the library, and I would not like to see those signs moved. Mm -hmm. Those need to stay there for obvious yeah. reasons. Are they right. separate signs or in one? No, they're stacked right on top of each other. Okay. Um, the other suggestion that was put to me was, was to go ahead and take the street signs because you got North Main, South Main, Elm Street, Sugarloaf Street, and she, I was asked by a person um, well, can't you just stack those on top of each other? I was like, well, I can stack two, but I can't stack four. Right. Well, what do you need four for? I was like, well, f because those are the areas where the KIA signs are put up. Right. And, well, I don't care about those. Well, I'll tell you what, that we was do. a wrong thing yeah. to say to this kid. Right. Um, needless to say, I disagreed, um, and that's as far as it went. But a lot of heart and a lot of thought went into putting those in yeah, no and reason. if somebody decides that they want to take them down I think that's a shame yeah no. so we're not it's not gonna happen right the other thing that we did in the in the common is the old electrical the old electrical has been removed 
Great. So Thank that's you. gone now. Um, the other questions that they had was, is, well, can we go ahead and take the park benches because a couple of the park benches are kind of leaned back a little bit. They're well, can't you just like pick it up a little bit and put a little material underneath there? It's, it's not like putting a matchbook underneath the table. It doesn't work that way. If you're going to do it, you're going to pull it out and you're going to reset it properly. But again, this goes back to what are we going with this? What is it going to look like? I don't want to spend the time to pull these things up, to reset them back in, to say, oh, God, we don't want them there, and now we want them here. No, we don't want these monuments here. We want these monuments over there. Is the only problem Can with I the benches that they lean back too much? No, yeah, they're, they're, it, it's, they're yeah, they lean back and it's off to one the side. Ground. And one of, the, one of the requests was is one of the benches, if some of the benches that go back in, if they can actually have an armrest yeah. for, for somebody to, to be able up. to go ahead and, and help themselves up with. Um, I'm so, sorry. I wanted to say we did talk about that. There are other items for that. I, w I wouldn't want to, like you said, see those benches pulled and set back in without some thought as to what would actually go back in and maybe a placement right. of them. So um, as much as I want to get them fixed and comfortable for people to sit in, because they're not real comfortable as it is, and like you said, an armrest, um, there is some planning and thought that mm -hmm. needs to go through on that and exactly. where they are. So. Um, but signs, I'd love yeah. you to take those out, and I'm thankful for the, you know, the other it, stuff. But I, I, you know, so we did this little committee mm -hmm. study on it, um, and we, we do have a streetscape things, and we're doing some other downtown studies. Uh, we have a grant to do some studies with the businesses and how to attract areas. So I think we could roll some of that common upgrade into whatever we, you know, we'll, we'll fit it into that grant. Would you be able then to, before Coordinate winter, with, Ha, you know, before it gets cold, have Kevin um, figure out where we're well, going to put those set. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think that whole, my understanding is, is because now some of the other issues that kind of roll into play with this is we have crosswalks that right. come from and they go to a landing pad that go nowhere. Right. And, you know, and what one of these people were saying that, well, you know, you, you've got too much. I'm going to mess this word up because my brain's kind of squashed right now. <laughs> in, in previous area yeah. that Impervious. doesn't accept water. Yeah. Okay, well, now you're telling me you want more sidewalks. Right. So now I'm just adding to it. I mean, yeah. granted, you can no, do some different things. You can, you, can, you can do brick with something else so it reduces the amount of area so it actually will... We'll, we'll discharge sure some of the water. I'll work with them. Um, but, I mean, that whole thing, personal opinion, again, have a plan. Yes. For the whole thing, not right. nickel not and dime it, because exactly. the nickel and diming is going to kill you. There yep. was a plan well, there is. that was proposed and discussed by this group. Yep. It was way beyond, you know, at this point where mm -hmm. I think the town could go from here to there. Right. Um, and these were the four things that came out of the committee that there was consensus on. Um, so, so I'll get with and, you when okay. and, and Trevor was on the committee. So, and Trevor's, you're, you're sort of like spearheading this. So get with Trevor. And so, my, so my question is, is, so those four things are part of the grand scheme? And if I only do it once, I'm done? Taking the signs down. Taking no, the signs down, the moving, the, moving the... Benches. There'll be a there'll be a little bit more, but I, I'll get with you. You know what I mean? Check. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't want you yeah. to do things twice yeah. at all. Yeah, I, I just I don't want to I don't want to DA do it again. No. Right. It'll no. be a one time shot. Um, yeah, Trevor. Trevor will give you some guidance and of the committee and for what we can what we, we can do could do it. to right. start with and, and yeah. what our plan is for the future. Yeah. We are we are going to try to. You know. Cool. Which reminds me, Carolyn, I never heard from the woman from the Conway School who said she'd call me later. In the week. Um, I kind of, the, the way I wrote the email was like, I don't think we can focus. Remember I wrote, I think I CC'd you. Did I CC you? Yeah, you forwarded it to me, but I thought she was going to call me at the end of last week. Yeah, well, I kind of, when I said, I'm not sure, we have so many things happening, I'm not sure that we would be able to focus in on this and give you the yeah. time well, in your time frame. Because, you know, they... integrated into the Deerfield, uh, the, the Elm Street space. project. Yeah. So. I, I'm happy to talk with her. Okay. okay. Well, I mean, you okay. could just follow up with her. I, she, they, they are time specific, right. and the problem is, you know, they want it done and do, do a presentation, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that may fine. not work. Well. And that well, doesn't. I'm it, happy to talk to you. Okay. We'll, we'll chat. All right. No. I, I would, mm -hmm. and that what I should have CC'd you on it, but right. I try not to do the, you know. Well, so, 
I, I try not to email any anything gotcha. but schedule on my email. Right. Um, so Trevor will work with you and Wendy, and cool. so that you will have minimal. And I, um, was there anything else you wanted? Yeah, sorry, I just got like oh, no, no. three, three more questions. No, 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 Kevin, that's fine. I just felt so you guilty that you're <laughs> here so late. No, that's okay. It's all part of the job. Um, Sewer. Are we going to resubmit for the Mass Works grant as the plans do because that is due Friday of next week, August 4th? I never saw no. any mention of it. No, nope. no oh, announcement. Okay. That's all I was looking for. Nope. How, uh, why wouldn't we want to do Mass Works? Because we don't have a project. Because we don't, oh. have, we don't have it zeroed into where we want it. We're oh. not certainly going for what we had on the plan oh. last time. Unofficial. Right? We're, we, we probably would never get that because it's just so overkill. Right. Okay. Even though that we've included other towns? Where did, where did right. they get? That's yeah. exactly why. Oh, I thought. So anyway. I don't know um, their priorities. I, I, do, I don't get notes. Does that, don't they give original priority? I kept trying to look for it to see when the deadline was. Yeah, yeah. It, seems uh, like would, it was actually, it was Tony DeSimino and the guy that used to work I'm for Weston and Sampson that's mm -hmm. working with uh, uh, Dave Prickett now. He's like, hey, he says, just a quick little so poke no in the bear. He says, just a reminder. He says, if you want to do this, he says, we'll go ahead and put it together again because they'll just resubmit it. Yeah, but it it's not anywhere. It's, it's nothing it we can use, right? Easy if you so it's from, from what I've understood uh, from everybody. That's that's a that's a four day conversation. Can, exactly. So so we'll talk a little. Bit. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, the other the other two quick things I got is uh, Kip and I actually were it was when we were talking when we are when we were on. Mill Village Road. Mm -hmm. Driveway permits, what we have for driveway permits right now is very slim for information, what we're, what we're requiring from the people. Um, in the past, what I've done is I've just regurgitated what, what the past people have done and said five feet, six feet of, of paved apron if you're on a paved road. Um, but that's a special uh, condition um, I think we probably ought to look at it at some point in time because we need to look at hold harmless agreements mm -hmm. because if somebody is technically go ahead and paving a driveway, it's part of our layout. They cross the sidewalk. That is still part of our layout. So if they're right. doing something that makes us liable, so we need to do a harm, hold harmless. We need to think about what the sub-base materials are. We need to think about what the drainage pipe should be. Right. All of this should be on a documentation. So that way when somebody comes up and asks a question, here you go, this is exactly what we're looking for. Right. You know, if you're, if you're looking for a, a single family home, this is the maximum width of your driveway. This is the radius of what, the, what your edges are going to be. I mean, there's just many, many Kevin, things I, I think we I need to think I about. I would be really happy if you did that re over again because, um, and added all those things. Because you know, um, the newer driveways, like along Upper Road, right. um, they drain and ice over into the, you know, into the road if you uh, may, may i suggest that you go to montague's website actually some of the stuff i pulled out of montague but i don't agree with everything that they had oh, well. um I'd, I'd like to i'd like to take some of what they have yeah and build on that okay um because right now what we do is underneath our our bylaws uh Article two, curb cuts, uh, they talk about the permit, the inspection, the denial, the whole nine yards, 156-9, construction inspection and correction of defects. Uh, it's very vague. Mm -hmm. um, all they talk about is uh, unsafe conditions um, that might cause damage. Right. Oh, uh, there's a lot more. That, that's, that that's, to that's too vague. You know, that, that's open, way, way too open to interpretation. So are you saying that the bylaw needs to change or we just need to point to it? Well, we can, no, it's an application. The, the bylaw itself can stay the same because all of the things we want to incorporate into it would technically be unsafe conditions, right. have to worry about drainage, the whole yep. nine yards. So all of that part of the bylaw is done. All we're doing is we're just making Changing it clear as part of the what application exactly what we're looking for. Okay. And part of that application could be that if they're granted a permit for a driveway, it's their obligation to maintain it. Correct. Which would relieve what we just went through. Correct. And there should be a difference between commercial and residential. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, widths, requirements. Sure. You know, because realistically, if it's, if it's commercial where you got trucks rolling in and out, personal opinion is it should be paid 50 feet. Mm -hmm. 
depending on how deep they're going into it. Well, yep. the whole thing is you just don't want to track you know, right. debris onto the roads. Exactly, regardless. which I, I have some issues in different areas in town right now that yep. we're in the process of trying to address. Um, the last thing I, well, actually I got two things, but the last one is whatever. Um, transfer station, the sticker sales are around 1,100 roughly. Uh, I've been there the past couple weekends. I wasn't there the whole uh, day last Saturday, but I was there till about 10 o'clock. Really haven't had a whole lot of problems. Uh, the very first day on the 15th, there was one person that came in and the guy was angry and he burned rubber, literally blowing out of the driveway and I wish I would have caught his plate number because I would have called the cops on him. Um, and the worst part was is this guy had a sticker on his car, but it looked like it was from like 2014. <laughs> so you know, so he's angry that he finally got busted for not getting a sticker on his car four years later. Um, but again, long story short is on the 15th, I only had about 14 people I had issues with. Um, two of them, once I was able to do a little back research, it wasn't a big deal. You know, one person came through with their car, didn't have a sticker on it but they already have three stickers in their, in their family, right. all in the same house. And I know all the people, they have four cars, three of their cars have stickers. It's yeah. like, do me a favor next time, just try and drive one of the other three cars. It so it wasn't that big of a deal. This last weekend, we only had two. And to be honest with you, I think a lot of the people that were there were happy that we were enforcing. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, definitely. if you have to buy the stickers. Yeah, exactly. Sure I, mean, I buy a sticker. I buy rule. bags. Right. If I buy them, you got to buy them. Right. Let me ask a question. Yeah. If How much are the stickers? Are they $65? dollars $65. If, if you have a household where there's two people that live there and they have four vehicles, why can't we charge them 65 for the first one and then $10 for each additional one? That's what we do. The, That's what we is? do. Okay. Yep. Um, That's exactly Kevin, what we do. I've had a couple of people ask me if... Um, they have gotten the small bags. If mm -hmm. they bring the small bags that not opened mm -hmm. to the town clerk, can they pay the difference and get turn them in for big bags? I'd be okay with that. Would that be all right with us as a But that's Sorry. completely up to you guys. I mean, that's what was that? That's a financial thing. Um, I've had thing. a couple of people. Um, you know how we switched to the, to the smaller bags for. Um, you know, we had so many requests from the center, elders. For the seniors? When for they the seniors. The smaller bags. Not for senior bags, the smaller yeah. bags. So, yes. but there are a couple seniors <laughs> that sh would like the big bags because they, the little bags don't hold enough. enough so, and they, they 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 so they were wondering if they brought the unopened um, package small of the bags, small bags, bags and change it in for the, and then yeah. I have no issues with that, that whatsoever. That would that be okay? Yeah. And they would pay the difference and get the bigger It'd be a three dollar difference. It's your decision. No, it's, I think it's seven. I think it's seven or eight dollars. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. It's, your, it's seventeen dollars yeah, versus yeah, seven, twenty-five. Yeah, seventeen compared to twenty-five. So someone sorry. would come in and pay eight dollars and turn in their little bags. Sure. We just have to let Barbara know so she. Yeah. You know, or, or could, could and you better do it in a memo too. Yeah. So that way it's written. Yes. So that way everybody there knows what's would, going would on. Would that be all right with you? It's fine with me. Okay. Yeah. Could, I could, was almost going to say, should we get medium bags? But I was going to say, I like the better when you had to ask for small bags. Well, we, we eliminated them. Yeah, we eliminated them, but they came, we brought them back because there were so many requests. And, and now we're not selling very many of them at all. I know. And I got a package of small bags. I don't open them up. And Wait a minute. These are big enough. Oh, no. Got to have them. Yeah. What am I do now? <laughs> now you know you can do something. So find the guy that wants the small bags and sell it to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah black market well, bags going on. Anyway. Um, to go along with to go along with that, um, I did meet with uh, waste management the other day, looking at the comparisons and the compactors. Mm -hmm. uh, that compactor we have up right now is a year 2000, so it's 17 years old. It has been rehabbed. What they're going to do is they're going to look to see what they have to do, what they feel they would need for a dollar amount for that piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. If it's anything more than $4,000, I would say um, spend the extra money and go with a brand new one. Right. Um, Cole Rain just went ahead and had um, bids went out and the cheapest one they were able to come up with, brand new unit, uh, $11,290 wow. for a brand new unit. And we're already paying so much a month right. for that already. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Um, the, the repairs that have been approved by CIPC in town meeting for funds for fixing the 
front of the salt shed at the transfer station and doing away with the vent fan mm -hmm. and the fan that's never been hooked up since whenever early 80s when they originally built it um, that repair will start somewhere around mid August um, I did talk with a contractor that that won the bid and he said boy that's been a long time I says well this is all the money I got man so what can we do um, and he said well I'll tell you what he says uh, if you can help me out with some type of a lift so that way I don't have to rent one or bring another one in from the other end of wherever he is working he's I'll keep it at the same price and I said, okay, I says, we can do that. So uh, we've been able to, that bucket truck that we're sharing between the three towns, um, I've already talked with the other two towns, they've got no problem with us utilizing it for that service. So, so we're able to go ahead and proceed with the repairs at the same cost of before. Oh, Kevin, that was which, a really good solution. Which, which, Thank which you. Which is a lot cheaper. Um, and the only other last thing I've got is, is they just came out. Um, I just got an email the other day, and it was funny because after I got it, like 12 minutes later, Wendy sent me the same one. Um, the MIA grant, MIIA, uh, grant applications. Um, there's a lot of good stuff on there. You know, we're allowed ten thousand dollars a year. Up to ten. Up to ten. Yeah, up to ten thousand dollars a year. But that's for the entire town. So that includes the police department and, and anybody else. But it has to be around certain things where where it's a risk management problem. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do anything from like a sewer maintenance program. Um, developing a pavement management program, facility security, um, equipment, panic alarms, entry systems, cameras, um, facility maintenance, software, third party audits. Um, so we write a grant and send it? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, easy enough because I. The, form. the, yeah? they, the things you're, he's reading are the things they want to fund this year. Great. These are, these are some of the samples because, like, what I did last year, I wrote a grant last year, and that's how we got our, our trench box. So I got a $9,998.52 nice. trench box. Good. So Kevin, that was good. I didn't, I didn't realize that you did that. Oh. That was nice. You don't remember that? No, I didn't know that. It's a nice, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice little unit. Yeah. Because, because this one here is not, because most people, when they, when they think about a trench box, they think about the one that's already put together. It's already welded up whole nine yards. This one here, you can physically take apart and put in the back of a pickup truck. That's good. And it's because it's, it's compartment, it's panelized. So it is four-sided so if you're going down you can make it a box and drop it straight down if you're working on a, on a on a sewer line or something like that you can remove the bottom panel so you've got two feet off the bottom so that way you're completely That's enclosed nice. all the way around besides the two feet so that way your pipe can continue doing its thing I think it's gonna work out really really well That's great um, and it was funny because I, I ended up going to a, a meeting today up in Greenfield with all the other superintendents and um, to save money, I carpooled with somebody else and, and, <laughs> and, let, and let the other town pay for our fuel. Yeah, I um, took the motorcycle up. And uh, <laughs> long story short is I, I looked on that. I was like, I said, what's that? He goes, ah, oh, it's, it's my backup cameras. I was like, really? He goes, oh, hey, so I'm putting them in all my rigs. And that's when he said, he's, yeah, he's, I bought those through the MII grant. Huh. And, um, and it was kind of messed me up because I'm, I'm playing with it. And I'm looking at it because he put it in the front too. But the oh. left is the right, and the right is the left because it's a backup camera. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. So I was like, <laughs> so what do you do this for? Right. And he goes, well, he says, for the bigger trucks, you know, if they got to come up close to the guardrail, at least they can look and yeah. see that they're close to the guardrail. When they're lining up their plows, they don't have to have somebody else stand there and line up their plows. But like I said, there's there's just so many different things that you can you can get through right. these guys. Um, and, oh, Kevin, that's wonderful. And, and as we go ahead and we take some of the classes through MIIA, um, yeah, I reported that we got the credit. Today. Yeah, we get we get credits on those. Almost three thousand. That's great. You know, so that's why uh, we dragged you the last thing, Wendy. Oh, Wendy went. Mm -hmm. We got credits for. Yeah, um, because it was it was yeah. funny because when I went to the the confined space one, the woman looks at me. She goes, "You teach this class, don't you?" I was like, "Well, yeah." She goes, well, "Why are you here?" I says. Two reasons. One, I like to see how much somebody else teaches the class. And two, I get credits. <laughs> she goes, oh, okay. Makes sense. It reduces our insurance. So. It is yes. But I can understand. It's the Massachusetts Mass Insurance Association. Mass Interlocal Insurance Association. It grew out of the Mass Municipal Association when insurance companies were not covering municipalities. And they created this to, and it's blossomed into we this We just switched back program. to them. Um, um, 
Yes. Uh, was a year before last, because um, the where we were um, with what was it, Larry Matt Joseph. Larry Joseph, and he was really competitive for a while, but his prices got but you get higher. so much with and so and Free we switched. Pens. <laughs> tote bags. If you go to the, no, if you go to the conference, you get a free tote we got, bag. There's a lot yeah. of great trainings, We had grants, made substantial savings, good so we prices. switched. Yeah. But what is wonderful about Maya is we do, we are able to get continued discounts. Mm. And, um, the and more we really do, the less money we pay. Now. They're doing more and more out here because I think there's enough towns mm -hmm. to make it worthwhile. But uh, Kevin, I just want to let you know that the Conservation District, I just submitted a grant for that Roads and River program. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll know in another m month or two, and then we'll okay. do that training. And I, I think that'll be worth something. That'll be helpful. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. That's enough. <laughs> yeah, you kept saying, I have two, three, uh, th I have three, uh, four more things. <laughs> well, yeah, well, there was actually one more, but <laughs> that, that's going to be a 12-hour conversation, so. While you're right in front of us, did you ever get a phone call from that John Lukowski or any email information about those shredder pumps? Negative. Okay. Negative. Um, Kevin. Actually, you know what? I am going to ask. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm not trying to open a can of worms here. I'm just kind of curious. Have you guys figured out what you're going to do for the hookup fee for Sugarloaf Street? I think, I, you know, I think we have a policy in place. Yeah. Um, so I have researched uh, several other towns, mm -hmm. different builders and developers that I work with and asked what their towns do. They um, charge a certain amount per house, per bedroom, mm -hmm. and they're required to put in all the infrastructure for the whole development. And they pay, you know, some are 990 a bedroom and others are not. You know, it depends on the town. Uh, right. Northampton pays, you know, so that the developer is, um, has the expense of putting in all the infrastructure, hooking it all up, and then they pay per bedroom. Right. And then there's usage fees, obviously, that the homeowner pays after that. You're taking on the responsibility of the system for, for life. I mean, forever. And right. So, I mean, I feel we did that research, and, and we put a lot of effort into that policy, so... It would not look good to change it no. at this moment in time. <laughs> no, I, I feel very uncomfortable changing it. Well, I just figured with the policy you put into play <clears throat> earlier, and honor, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, according to your Chapter 236, um, Part 1, the rules and regulations for the sewers, Article 2, cost of insulation, all costs and expenses uh, incident to the insulation and connection of the sewer uh, shall be borne upon the owner. The town uh, shall identify, the owner shall identify the town of any loss or damage, uh, maybe directly, directly or indirectly um, by the insulation. So, I mean, it's already, it's already in our bylaws too, so. All right, I was just curious. So I don't think a formal decision was made yet, but uh, we, had got, had, well, we wasn't haven't it? got together as a board of sewer commissioners the to discuss it The only thing that scares me yet. is if you go off of what was already done, then that opens up everything. Oh, well, right. that's our policy. Well, you changed it before, right? so change it for me. Mm -hmm. You know, so once you set a yep. precedent, we, I think we, we did a that a few years ago, and I, I feel we put a lot of effort into it. Right. Do you have okay. that right in front of you? I'm sorry, which I one? Think I the bylaw? This one? Yeah. I, not the bylaw. Does that have the fee on it? Oh, no, this one oh, does. The fee's on the form. All the fees on the phone? Yes. Yeah, no, I don't have that. That, if I remember right, was it 3,300? No, it's it's based on flow. It's 110 gallons per day per bedroom at a cost of $10 a gallon. So it's $1,100 a bedroom. So each, so if you had a two-bedroom house, it'd be 2,200. If you had a three-bedroom house, it'd be 3,300. So, so it, the formula so itself comes right out of the health code. Correct, because it all falls underneath the, the amount is mass title five flows. Right. So going on that theory, whether you're hooking twenty seven houses into it, the flow is still the flow. It's the amount of bedrooms. So yep. that's well, I mean that's what the other other you know 
neighborhoods or towns that I looked at, that's kind of how they did it. Of course, every town's different and they have different processes, but I, I just had been working on two large, 50, over 55 developments in, um, in the towns and I just, I asked, you know, what, I asked the developer, what do, you, what do you have to pay? How much does the town charge you and what, what do you have to do? And, and that's the information I got back on both. The, um, one was a little more, one was a little less, but, you know, I'm, you know I, don't, I, don't, I wasn't around at that time where the policy was set and I don't know, what, you know, I didn't, I, I think there were a lot of research was done as to what number that should be at. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I wasn't involved with any of that, but just kind of, I think the only thing we, we need to think about at some point in time to go kind of go along with the sewer and the connections and, and the sewer lines, you know, from, from the houses, whole nine yards. Really need it in writing somewhere. Where's our responsibility? Mm -hmm. Does our responsibility at the main? Is our responsibility at the layout? Um, historically in the past, if we have had a town tree that has caused the blockage, then we have taken it from the blockage and fixed it. So, again, I think there's just something just to tighten this up a little mm -hmm. bit more so that way there is no questions. It's not up to somebody's interpretation. Right. It'll be, this is what we say we do. Kevin, so. could, when you're just around with different people, would you just ask about it, that? It depends on which town you are. Greenfield right. is Everybody's different. Greenfield's the curb. From yeah. the curb to the house, it's yours. No matter, even if and it's there's a other town places, tree? It's 10 feet from the house. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, wow. There is so many... Variables, yeah. Yeah, and, and different towns do it different ways. Mm -hmm. So, I don't, um, and then kind of talking on trees. Again, this is just something just to think about in the back of your mind that we've had a lot of trees come down. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm not whining that, it, that, it, that it's hitting my budget because of my overtime, but I mean, I am bringing in two, three guys you know, they are there for a couple hours anyway in the middle of the night trying to pull stuff apart. Right. If it's a tree that's on our property, it's not part of our layout, understood. But if it's a tree on somebody else's property, should we really be responsible for it? Uh, no. Just something just... No, no. Something just put no, in your... No, Think about it. You know what I mean? You, you got... If this right here is the property line or my layout, and I'm in... 10 feet off of there and that tree comes down and takes out telephone pole puts down wires we have to go there wait for every source to show up they release it from the tree or from the wires and then we the have owners. to spend all the time cleaning it up and everything else is that really should be our responsibility no. No, matter of fact they the just homeowner, did, right? the, 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 it was just a study or a report done on that uh, same issue and that the homeowners respond is responsible for that homeowners insurance right so yeah. cover so again, I think that's something well. I that think the problem is up. though. Um, I think the town has to respond, but you can oh. bill. Correct. You right. bill right. the homeowners. You everybody safe. Yeah. Right. Trees, yeah. Because see, open. you're op you know you're on the road. We've got one section of river road. It, that we're I mean, if you have someone that's elderly or somebody months, that's. I mean, you don't know who lives in that house. You you know you can't expect. No, no, because there's nothing. To hire somebody to come and respond. Right. Right. So that's why I think we just need to tighten up our policies because we are policy free. Propose something. Yeah, I, I, I think we do have to respond, but, right. but it's but billable to a homeowner. Yeah, but and, and the homeowner can, by choice, either pay it or send it to the insurance, insurance company. company. I and mean, or, you, know, you get nailed through the insurance and company, or but just ultimately. But take care of their property. Right. Or take it down before. But exactly. That's what I mean by taking care of that. What, what we have to do is if we start doing that, we need to have plenty of discussion and no. say that we're going to be doing this effective like six months out. Oh, so yeah. Oh, you've got to give them plenty of time. Yeah. yeah. So people yeah, all of a sudden are it. not shocked that we're sending them a bill. But have some samples. Of something. But, Kevin, actually that makes sense. And that, you know. Uh, I'm just trying to recoup our costs is all I'm trying to I know. Do. I know. It, 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 it has I'm been. Cheating. No, it has been really excessive, and it happens on weekends usually. It's yeah. so terrible. I'm sorry. I know. So, um, but that makes sense. So we should, <laughs> but we need to have a, a, a real public um, discussion. We have to have a public meeting. And then a, and a public 
send out notices with the tax bill and as effective whatever date we pick it as a date this right. is what's going to happen and we and we should talk to a couple insurance companies and see how they would handle it mm -hmm. would they you know they're not supposed to but they might penalize the homeowner so then the homeowner would need to know whether you know do i pay this or do i pay because ultimately if it yeah, comes to insurance yeah so, so you know we need to have public discussion about it and um you know i could do some research through the insurance companies or something and mm -hmm. find out what they would like how cool. they want to handle it all right that's it i promise i'm done okay <laughs> good night on, on a related note something i didn't mention that's sort of related i'm meeting with um bruce st peters and, and attorney judith kundal on Friday and our, a representative from our code company to begin the conversation about updating oh, our bylaws. Wonderful. I should have put that on the agenda for mm -hmm. appointment, um, but we can wait. And I'd certainly like to find one more person. I think a three-member committee would be good for that. Great. Kevin, thank you so much. No Here's that report Thanks. that they produced in the net right there. Grant, the first part of it is all of their legal part of it, you know, this is okay. more hold harmless, blah, 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 blah. But the actual scope is the last page. Okay. okay. Thanks. Can I, thank you. Can I give that night. to you? And what will I do with it? Put it on the window, so I'll put it on the window. <laughs> put a sticky <laughs> note above it. Can I make a, uh, just because we, we skipped over this, can I make a motion to approve the me, uh, minutes from yes. uh, June 14, 2017? And I will second that. All those in all favor? Those, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, get that done. Um, uh, the appointments, um, why don't we just read them and then. Yep. So I'll make a, uh, a motion to appoint Jeffrey A. Upton to this uh, CIPC, the fin uh, financial, he's a, in, from the Finance Committee recommendation. The second would be um, Rachel S. Blaine to the CIPC Planning Board recommendation. M.A. Swedland and Timothy uh, Fannin to the Franklin, Franklin County Solid, Solid Waste, Waste Management, Management District. District. Okay, that's a mouthful. Um, and Wendy Foxman is the alternate to the FERCOG Council. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, the only new business I had, um, I had complaints about trash that's been up at Stillwater Bridge. Yes. Um, no one has, you know, from DCR has picked that up. So, um, you know, we were going to write a letter anyway. So I think um, I tried to look through my um, contacts. I think it's Michael Case. He's a re uh, Western Regional Director. I think he's the one that we got to send a letter to. But, uh, you know, we need to write that the, they need to get moving on the access to the Deerfield River. You know, by the cheap side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's, can we craft a letter if there's no problem? We can tra trace down the tr trash and then also follow up on the mm -hmm. access. Is that okay with you? Sure. Okay. Sounds good. All right. I um, wanted to say something when you were talking before about, you know, this Wes and Samson bill. Um, I've sort of deliberately not been signing most anything, <laughs> so I bring it before you so you are in the loop and you can carefully look and, at it. And Thank I you. really appreciate that. And, and, and Kip is absolutely right. We need to be more on... And, on, on task on that. Mainly it educates me as right. to what's going exactly. on. Exactly. That's know? what I said to, you know. Even well, it it's, came to me it's with a the grant applicant, and I said, well, I've been having the board sign these because I want them to know what's, yeah. what's well, going on. Yeah. Well. But, but it's also that, good that if we get grants. If we, right. I, mean, I've, I mean, I probably did remember that trench thing, but mm -hmm. honestly. And I know you need to go, but again, ticks are bad. Perithium. These are on sale, 549 at um, Tractor Supply. And um, there's prethium in here, and you just spray your pants and your socks and your shoes, and it really works. And if you're really going into the brush, make sure someone sprays your shirts. Mm -hmm. But sure. it's, it's a lot cheaper than buying those fancy clothes, I think. And, well, and I, and I still, room. yeah, and I still think it's kind of weird to have that stuff in the clothes that's against your skin. So, and then um, if you take lint from your dryer and um, weatherize a toilet, you know, toilet paper roll, 
and spray perithium on the lint and stuff it in here, the mice take it back to their nests and it kills on contact. So it's good, cheap way to get rid of ticks in your... It really does work. I know, I know it sounds so hokey, but I have to say it really works. And the, and, um, and the chipmunk, uh, chipmunks do the same thing. And chipmunks carry the ticks too. So anyway. Um, and we've got warrants to sign. And we got warrants to sign. Is there any other new business that you had? Uh, oh, yeah. the mosquitoes. I just want to say mosquitoes are being trapped. Um, there are lots more mosquitoes, obviously, than last year. But they are still clean. So um, no, everything is negative at this point. The only Sorry. thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, sewer study committee. Oh, thank um, you. You know, it, uh, it, some of the, the members uh, were feeling that we're not uh, following our charge uh, to the select board and we're supposed to have a, um, a report to this board by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. um, but the charge, I, I feel, is uh, quite extensive and I think it's going to take a lot more time. Um, to, to go over this, there's going to need to be a lot of studies done and stuff. I just don't see that is happening anytime soon. Uh, with that being said, I'm, I'm still trying, we're going to go forward, um, and I'm speaking with engineers to talk about the Head Works project. Um, and tomorrow at the sewer study uh, committee meeting, um, I think that, uh, you know, I'll address that uh, board as well um, as to, you know, what my feelings are as, as far as going forward. What time, um, I'm sorry, what time's that meeting? It's at six o'clock. Okay. Here? Yes. Okay. And sorry. I, um, through the whole process, I've, I've tried to, I've, I've been, uh, if you will, uh, the, the chair, but also been very neutral as to everything going on, even though I am a member of the sewer commissioners. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've kept an open mind through that. Uh, but it, 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 what I've seen happening, not necessarily with this committee, but what's been going on is that there's been a lot of conversation, a lot of studies, a lot of money spent, and we still have the same crazy little problems. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to sidestep the big problem, but I want to address the issues that we have now. I, I, I hate kicking the can down the road, and I'm not saying that I want to promote something that you know we're going to have to redo, but there are things that we can do uh, that are expensive but they don't run, don't run into the you know millions, millions of dollars right. and it can alleviate a lot of the problems that we that we're experiencing at the moment right um it's and, really important that we get a long-term strategy but i agree with you i think um we do need to do some stuff like right away mm -hmm. there is, um, you know. so what you know one of the things that i was thinking of is um I, unfortunately i can't make tomorrow night but um, maybe you can. I cannot it. tomorrow night, but um, I could make but the next one. But maybe, maybe we um, just like we did with scams. Maybe all three of us need to show up, so we start having more education going on. And so, I mean, we're we can be ex officio on any committee, yeah. and um, maybe then we can get we can appoint um, that Josh Shamel. Is, well, there's an opening on the board now, and I'm going to ask him if he's interested. Well, in, and that's what I was thinking of, is maybe um, if we all three start attending, then maybe we could get Bruce to come back. Because if what we'd do is we would become exo, you know, we would just be there as commissioners, all three of us. Hmm. And then you still would have an op we so we'd basically have two openings, and that way we could get... Josh to be on it, and maybe we can get Bruce to come back. Um, and, you know, and so, because I, I don't I, have any problem with that. I, I just, I think well, that it was just a what's, thought, but. What, I think what's been frustrating, or what has been frustrating some of the members, is it seems like that we're just spinning our wheels mm -hmm. because, uh, with the exception of uh, Josh, you know, none of us have the experience to, to know, uh, you know, to, to answer this charge. Um, I've, I've become, I, I believe, well enough educated on the situations that, uh, not my opinion, but I've, I think I've shared with you that I've had three other engineers come there and kind of led them on down this blind path. This, this is our plant. What do you see? This is what's wrong. 
you tell me what you think. And they've all told me the same thing. So, you know, but that's a, that's a, a short-term, mm -hmm. you know, solution to a serious problem that we have. Uh, but going forward, you know, when you read this thing, and I, I, I read it, but I guess I didn't really take the time to understand it. I mean, this charge wants us to examine all of the pipes, all of the drainage, which to me really has nothing to do with the sewers, um, you know, both of the plants, feasibilities, you know, back and forth. I, I mean, there's a lot here. There's a real lot here, and I know for, that we for have the to the capability that of your group, right? Right, and, and, and you know, I, I, and, and maybe it's just me, but when I look at this this charge, even though it's written on you know one or two pages, it kind of reminds me of what our government's going through with health care, you know, and it drives me bonkers. We know that we have problems. Why don't we fix the problems as they go? Why do we have to redesign <coughs> the whole a, thing a all at once? You know, it, it doesn't make sense. And the biggest thing is that, and this is just hypothetical. If our community spent a million dollars and had a comprehensive study done for an entire year on this is the best way to deal with our sewer treatment plant, and it came with a price tag of 30 to $50 million, we wouldn't do it anyways. I know. You know? But so I, I like, guess that's what's freaking me out. It's just exactly. These numbers are so big, and that's well, why I'm thinking that can, we, we don't really have a choice. We have All three of us need to be there well, and, and kind of figure out I mean, I'm, a, I'm agreeing with you that we need to do some of these short-term fixes and, and to keep limp us along. Paths going yeah. it, it's, not, it's, it's not necessarily just to limp us along. It's, it's a fix that will fix a problem that we currently that we have. Currently have. Right. You know, it's not going to change the whole thing. Correct. Uh, but, You're not you know. going to fix it. Deerfield but like but what, I'm, what I'm concerned about is, is, is a long-term strategy because right. we've... Well, and, it, and I'm hesitant to invest such huge amounts of money for singly for us because right. we just can't afford it. Exactly. And so it, you know I when mean, you, we need you to do something. When else. you talk about a long-term strategy, I, I, it's it, to me it's pretty clear. We want to improve our system. Mm -hmm. You know that's the strategy. So now, how do you implement that strategy? You, you, you just like we do in town. You figure what's our biggest problem in front of us. Okay, let's solve that problem. Now we come back here and come back here, and and that's the way to go about it. I, I certainly think, and uh, you know part of the thing that I found very hard to uh, understand is how this project was designed on somebody else's land. But that got me thinking, you know what, someday something's going to happen down there. So maybe now is the time to approach people and see if we can acquire more land. Some of the land is in um, an APR program, which would, it, it, dollar-wise, it doesn't have a lot of value. And we could probably, maybe the town owns some land where we could swap out, mm -hmm. you know, certain, you know, I'm not talking 10 acres, I'm talking right. you know, maybe an Enough acre and a half or something like that. Footprint. Yeah, to give us a footprint but, to work But on. to do that process, you have to go to the legislature. And so you're, you're absolutely correct. If we think we're going to do it, we need to do get it. Started. Get right. started. Because you're talking about, but like, it's, months. Right. It's time, oh. time I know. That, that we can afford but it doesn't include a lot of money that right. we can't afford. Right. Right. Because no. you know you're going to have to do another clarifier. Clarify. That's point. right. There's and things that are going to have to be. footprint for that. That's right. You know, and so. if we're going to put up, you know, whether it's a small building or something, we've got right. to plan this thing sure. out a little bit yep. more. I would like to get more involved in, you know, at least at least getting to know what's going on at the at the meetings. Well, the and problem is it's so complicated. It's not straightforward. And it's not anything and, I have and, expertise in, but right. I still would love the ex and, education and that's, from it, people. It's, it, you know, I mean, I, you know, I personally get bored with a lot of things, but I found these meetings so interesting because, mm -hmm. you know, we have such a diverse group of people with Smart people. not just, you know, it isn't like they have no construction-related backgrounds, you know, and I found so much of that really helpful to me. So, you know, I've been, you know, coming down this road to be able to come to you guys and say, look at this is what we've learned. These are the suggestions that have come out of it. You know, some I agree with, some I don't, and this is why. And mm -hmm. then I feel that I can give you a good, educated understanding of why we need to do this and why we, we shouldn't do that right now. Mm -hmm. And in my bottom line is to make it better, but without saddling taxpayers with a huge burden, you know? No, we can't afford right Well, the and that's exactly. And that people are already 
I feel very sorry well, maybe, that the bills have gone up so much. Maybe we could, you know, I can't make tomorrow's meeting, but I'm not sure when the next one is. If it's a whole, is it a whole month away, or yeah. is it, do you get okay? Yeah, it's usually a so refer maybe by the second meeting <sighs> we could Maine. we in the August. second time. Yeah, uh, well, I'm going to be yeah in well, August. I'll the, be in one Maine. of the problems is that a lot of times those meetings are the same night as the, the South County EMS ones. So well, maybe we can we can pick another Ask night. Ask them to pick a night or yeah. Figure, you know. well, well, Right. Maybe Just you can sort out a new. Everybody and maybe you can get a new night. Well, and then maybe. look um, at your charge. Sure. We could all get together and say, yep. let's narrow this scope. Let's figure out where we need to go. Um, right. Whether it's two paths, we have a bigger plan, and then we got to get focused on what's really an issue right away. Yep. I mean, we know the screening down there is, is a major issue. Yep. Um, and it headworks, and, and like you said, acquiring some land or figuring out how do yep. we how do we go forward on. The, at least the next couple steps. I mean, um, I, I, I felt a year ago when I first went down there, you know, that this is something, you know, we, we could handle. And, and yet here is another year has gone by, yeah. and we're no closer. You're a lot more and educated. I, I, I know you've got, you guys have all done a, I, a but, ton but of But I feel work. I feel like you have more of a handle. On I mean, I oh, I definitely Bruce's do. I mean, you've eliminated is, you've eliminated stuff. That's which I mean, that I think you, is more important. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think that is important because some things you're just saying, you know, yeah. that just makes no sense. That's right. I'm just blown away. At, you know, I look at the book that Bruce dropped off in the files and stuff. Yeah. And it, it, it's so detailed. It's well put together. You can understand what's there and. Um, I mean, you guys have all done an amazing job of getting that that information, and you're right. And we just got to figure out a way to start moving forward on this stuff. And maybe if we can all come together, we can we can at least start on some of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, I I'm not going to be there that week. Um, of the 23rd. The 23rd. Yeah. Of uh, August. Yeah. yeah. And that's when they meet again. Uh, they're going to be meeting the 24th, I think, from what Kip was saying. Okay. When are you around? Are you around the week before that? Um, <clears throat> this is my Conservation District Northeast meeting, so I will be back the 17th. Um, and then and the 31st. The 31st. I wonder if maybe at your next, you know, tomorrow night's meeting, I wonder what if is, they would bump <clears throat> it, like, either the 17th or the 31st of August, just to um, allow us all to attend. What, but isn't the 17th our SCIMS meeting? No, there's no meeting. It's yeah, well, that's right. Yes. We took one. All yeah. right. Well, yeah. you know what? I'll uh, I'll suggest. And it, we usually it was the third. Oh, okay. So, oh, well, so I'll be I'll be, be back I'll be back from um, Vermont uh, that meeting, the Northeast okay. meeting. The seventeenth. Yeah, I'm coming back on Wednesday, sixteenth. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, this is so only I'll a three day work. meeting. Great. And, I mean, it's up to them obviously yeah. when they want to meet. But if if they could, that well, be, this is the great. you know I, in March I went to the. New England meeting, yep. and and we voted as a New England group to bring to the Northeast meeting that um, changed the definition to all non-federal right. agencies will be yep. eligible for money. And so, um, if the Northeast votes that, then um, what will happen you is can start the, getting the Western states. Well, the Western states, I, they they just don't want the federal government oh, sucking sorry. up federal dollars. So. They, they, they changed it in the last farm bill to government agencies. So right. if we can get it changed back from where it was before yeah. and we get them on board, then um, and the north, whole Northeast is supporting it, which right. affects mostly the Northeast. Yeah. So um, yeah. that means we'll get money for the forestry. We can apply money for the forestry to get a forest management plan mm -hmm. and then apply for um, habitat money for our and management money for our town forest okay. and that was the point of that great thanks for doing because that. well it will cost us probably about five thousand dollars for a forest management plan because nothing's been done for years and then you know we'll apply for whatever i mean we'll, from that plan it will give us what we need to apply for further on and the new farm bill is of would be effective 2019. So mm -hmm. by the time this all happens, we should be sorted out. So that would give us yeah. opportunity, and that would make check off one of my to-do lists. Things. <laughs> Just one <laughs> motion to adjourn. Or do yes, I, I'll second that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.